Can you guys hear me now? I think everything should be hopefully working. Good afternoon, folks. Yay! My goodness, this has been a chaotic stream setup today. Absolutely ridiculous. So sometimes now, when there's nothing actively using, yes, indeed. Um, or I will be, I feel like I have big enough ears that I could be a Vulcan. Um, that's not it, here, I'll put this over here. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool how uh, now it's registering, my camera is upside down. It's very, very good and useful. Listen, I respect all ranks. Also, how fucking cool is this shirt? I'm really hyped about it. Anyways, I'll, I'll chill out though. Um, but yeah, apparently anytime a camera is not, my, my camera isn't actively in use, it like, the computer forgets it exists entirely and I have to um, turn off and on uh, the camera as well. And also maybe perhaps restart my computer. That fixed it at one point. I'm not sure if it permanently fixed it. Also, I did make my bed before I turned on the stream, but then I put my towel down on the bed after I showered and Ferbert is asleep on it. So if it looks messy back there, it's because I'm a good cat mom and I don't want to disturb an elderly man. That's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah! Listen, if, if the main like way I get to be, um, it's cold. So I can't, I have like a lot of cute, um, hot weather stuff, but I don't have a ton of cute cold weather stuff. And so I put this over a turtleneck thing and I feel like a sparkly baby and it's pretty great. Also, bear, oh, right on time. I was just gonna warn you guys about this. I don't know if you can hear her in the background, but thumbs is in heat because I have to save up because she needs an anesthesiologist, like an anesthesiologist on staff when she gets spayed because her lung function is bad still. Um, just because she's cured of pneumonia and all that, but her lungs are just going to be a little bit bad for her whole entire life. And it is a little bit of a risk when she gets put under anesthesia. So um, for something like being spayed. So I can't just take her to one of the like, we spay 200 animals a day places. I have to take her to like a fancy place where they like are gonna monitor her and make sure she doesn't die. So since I haven't finished saving up for that yet, uh, she's in heat and she screams constantly. It's been very, yeah, yeah. Praying, praying for our poor little horny baby. She is struggling. She's annoying the shit out of the rest of the cats and me and uh basically doing sleep torture like um she seems to to uh feel like scream for hours and hours and then she'll sleep for, like maybe an hour which is long enough for me to fall asleep and then immediately get woken up by her screaming some more screaming is in heat is going to be my vibe it's an excellent vibe. I mean, like, to be fair, she has a very cute little kind of noise. It, like, could be worse. I've heard worse cat screaming in heat noises. But also, when I'm trying to sleep, there are, there are no good in heat noises. So, there's that. It's a struggle. So, uh... Oh fuck, I forgot to make tea before I started. At some point I will get, oh, actually it's four o'clock. Maybe I should make tea now so that um, I'm not awake till 5 a.m. Okay, I'll be our, be our, 
So, oh god, I moved the screen. Hang on. I'll put BRBT. Also, I have fun, um, BRBT two minutes. Okay, be right back. I have fun announcements when I get back. I will be two minutes. I don't know if you guys could hear me yelling, <laughs> but oh, also before I sit down, hang on, I want to show you guys the full. So it's actually like a really long, like it's like almost dress length. So I could wear it over like a mini dress also, which I'm very excited about the potential for this outfit. It's good stuff. Um, three things. I'm going to be drinking delicious pumpkin spice tea out of this old nostalgic mug. That is my grandparents and reminds me of my grandparents whenever I drink from it. It's very exciting. Um, two. There's two. What do you guys about my sparkly outfit? Tea. I also put a dash of pumpkin spice syrup in it because I can. Oh, so I set up Streamlabs to do some things. So there should be, there should be commands. Let me click and see is it in this. No, is it this? Commands. Oh, you know what I should do? I should make a thing that, that lists all the commands. I didn't think about that, but a bunch of the default ones should work. Like, um, let's see. Aha. Oh, why are there two different things? Uh oh, oh God. So stream labs and stream elements are two different things. Okay. That would have been a good one to add. Yes. But. Look at that. Cool. Okay. So that one works. Um, listen, fuck it. I'll add the discord right now. I can do this. Um, invite people. Edit invite. No limit. Never. Oh my God. That dumb little baby is just screaming her little heart out. That's not the right one. Is it this one? No. Is it this one? Oh, thank you, Amanda. Smart. Also, let me know if you guys can hear her, her sad little screaming because it's... I feel bad, but there's also nothing I can do and I like don't want to yell at her because it's, it's not her fault she's a sad little horny baby. 
So. Wait, I need the little heart icon. Where did the little heart icon go? Okay, there it is. Moon chat? Okay. Try it again, Zaros. We are all sad little horny babies, so we should all sympathize with poor little poor little Thumbelina. God bless her soul. Um, is my cold enough to drink yet? I'll be patient. Um, but yeah, so there's a bunch of commands. I will make probably a little, I just should just close this window because I'm not using this right now. I'm just going to move it over the under, other window so that whenever I accidentally click on that, I don't accidentally open it like an idiot. Um, I also added, there's apparently, there was some kind of like RPG or something. Loyalty. So I tried to give everyone oh okay it didn't work okay now i'm gonna i'm gonna give everybody 100 points did that work maybe so um there's gonna be things where you can bet points or there's like a heist mini game a gamble mini game an eight ball game, a slots game, duels. You can get points for making emote pyramids. And there's a chat announcement when viewers create an emote combo. I don't know what half these things are, but when I was looking at them, they sounded fun and interesting. So um, I will explore them more at some point, but I don't know what they all mean yet. So I haven't fully explored them, but yeah. That's where we're at. I started adding stuff like that. I still haven't finished adding channels to the Discord because I live a life of extreme chaos and there are always too many things going on to do things, but I will add stuff eventually. Oh, wait, I gotta put the window back up so I can see the chat and be able to reply to you guys. So I'm gonna put the reference image over here. And then that will be over there. Sorry, so you didn't try the Discord link again. What if it doesn't work? What are we gonna do? Wait, why does it have a dollar sign in the front? Okay, see this is why testing is important. Discord. It doesn't have a dollar sign in the fucking thing! Rude. Wow. Yay, thank you for helping. Where is the full image? This one. Okay, and last week we learned that I can actually zoom in on this. What a helpful and novel idea that I had. Oh God. That I had no idea was possible, but now I. It's a struggle. Oh my god, kill me. Kill me now. Please. Why is it like that? I'll put that over there. And then you should make an invite for the info and rules channel. How do I do that? Oh, I know that in the Discord settings, when I turned it into a community, there was... I can do a setup membership screening where I have to set up server rules. Um, briefly describe what your server is about. There's some stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I probably should be doing. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that that was a thing.
A novel. All right. Whatever. No limit. Got me the wing. And back, and back. Right there. Is there a space at the beginning? No. It's pretty much very strange. Okay. Good. Theoretically work. Well, thank you. And a reaction roll to actually get in. Uh, do you guys want to be in, uh, do you guys want to help with that <laughs> at all? Um, I will give you guys, like, free art. I have no money to bribe currently, but I do have free art. Because I keep meaning to do Discord stuff, but then a bunch of real life shit gets in the way. So, like having a cat that screams 24-7 because she hasn't been spayed. <sighs> we get tiered to people react to every paragraph so people might actually read it. Ooh, yeah. Nice. You can change things without me saying what to do because half the time I don't know what I should be doing anyways. I, I trust you. I go for it. Like, uh, it is not functional currently and I was just kind of winging it. So if somebody who knows what they're doing is winging it, oh god, I clicked the wrong thing. Um, I guarantee it'll be better than what I'm doing. Thumbs is screaming in the background to say that she agrees. Um. No, what the hell? The wrong color. That was very strange. Oh, the keyboard commands are working again. That's nice. Maybe I just had to restart my computer. Because remember last week, none of the keyboard commands for the keys were working? That was so weird. Or not last week, on Monday. That's the word I was looking for. Um, so that's nice. Everything's improving. Might sneeze. Um, it's cursed. I'm fine. Okay. It's unnecessary. Um, I forget what I was gonna say. Oh, has anybody watched Brave New World? It is on um, Peacock. It's an interesting show. I recommend it. It didn't get tons of good ratings, but I think um, I think people who are more like knowledgeable about sex work would understand it more. It is based on a book, yes. Um, but yeah, it has some interesting elements that I, I feel like people who have, who know or have been like in or adjacent to the sex work industry would kind of appreciate possibly. Um, and also it's just an interesting show to like think about in terms of, it's kind of like the conversation, God bless you. Whoa! Oh! She actually sneezed a cat booger on me. I saw it fly through the air. Oh! It's not on me. It's on the drawer next to me. Um. Jesus Christ. This is going to be a very exciting stream today. I can already get it. Butter is another cat who just has kind of like permanent uh, respiratory issues just because she had um, some dumb respiratory issues as a youth. And now they're permanent. 
it's not necessarily, it's not really about sex work. So here's the premise. It's a like future utopian society where um, no one is monogamous. Everything is like shared. There's no real privacy. Everything is for like the social body or the community. And it kind of explores the good sides and bad sides of that. But I do feel like it maybe takes a little bit more of a like, I'd, it could be more nuanced. It is, it is pretty nuanced as is, but I think it could be more nuanced. And I do think the overall vibe is like, yeah, this probably isn't a good idea. Whereas yes, the utopian society they built where everybody's emotions are controlled with a drug called Soma, probably suboptimal. Um, it's, it's written as a cautionary tale, but I do think that some of the experiences that the main character goes through as she's basically, she's not really a sex worker in their society. There's something called, um, they have like a hierarchical society where there's, um, alphas, betas, probably some other stuff in between, um, and epsilons. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit. It, I mean, it's, it's a good show. I am... To be fair, as like much as I'm like not selling it well, I do think it's an interesting show and I recommend it. Um, but yeah, so betas are basically there for the pleasure of the alphas. And so, um, but alphas are also there for the pleasure of the betas, but probably more so the other direction. Um, and then throughout like the show, sorry, spoiler alerts, the novel was written in 2016. I think it's like from the, I thought it was from like the fifties or something like that. The original one. It's like written by a dude that I want to say has like an H in his name. Yeah. It's old as fuck. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's not Harlan Coben cause that's like modern day murder mystery stuff. Um, but some of the experiences she has when some of the people that she interacts with start getting more into monogamy yeah are very reminiscent to what sex workers experience um when like trying to explain how they view sex and how it functions and also non-monogamous people probably um so it's it's interesting i think it has some possibly valuable insights that i haven't seen in another show yet um, but I haven't watched a ton of shows on that have sex work elements, which is a problem. I should watch more. Um, but yeah, what it made me think about is kind of the whole thing, like the discussion with Victor, where his premise is that like sex is like different and important and unique. And a lot of people have this view because of how we're raised like societally, that sex is like this unique kind of important magical thing that should be preserved and kept for people. Um, and I kind of want to question, like, why? Like, is that beneficial to us as a society? Is that positive? Or should it be like everything else where it's not the default, but it's an option? It's like, like how women being moms should be absolutely an option because a lot of people really want to do that and would love that. But it shouldn't be like the default in the way where it's like, if you don't do that, you're going to get pushback and people are going to be like upset at you about it. You know, does that make sense? Aldous Hux. Ah, I was right. There was an H in his name. Hey, Gunryuki, how's it going? Ha ha ha. Um, Huxley, totally close to Harlan Coben. Um, but yeah, it was just making me think about, think big thoughts about how we, um, view sex in our society and how this in their society in the show good morning it is not quite evening here it is late afternoon here um but yeah in the show they view monogamy as this like cursed horrible selfish thing and obviously that's not correct either um but neither is a uh, mandated free love. I feel like just mandatory constricting beliefs about anything seem to be 
that's maybe my view that there should be kind of like we should stray from mandating people's behaviors in any strong way other than like behaviors that do harm like murder oh god whoa the screen went crazy sorry no I fucked up the Line this right again. There we go. We're good. Oh yeah. Oh, interesting. What are some Confucian? Why does it keep changing colors when that happens? Um, what are some Confucian things that you're learning? If you feel like sharing some of them, no pressure. Just because I'm rambling about thinking big thoughts does not mean anyone else is obligated to do so as well. <laughs> oh, there's crows outside. Crows are talking. Yeah, balance is important. I think balance in all things is kind of moderation in all things, balance in all things. In the context of gender and sexuality, most likely, mostly like how a lot of early Western scholars describe the victimization of women under Confucianism. I don't know much about this. Can you expand on that? Also, it'd be easier for you to come in and, and talk about it verbally. Uh, I can also hop in Discord for you to do that. But if not, text is also absolutely fine. But it's not like women had no agency. I don't what what was like women's uh, level of agency like under Confucianism? Confucianism? Am I saying it wrong? Please yell at me if I'm saying it wrong. The system stayed in place for like a thousand years, so clearly women got something out of it. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that's a reason to say that women got something out of it. There's been a ton of systems that were in place for thousands of years that were extremely um, suboptimal for women, but there wasn't a huge way for women to get out of it. So it's like super patriarchal, but if you were of a high class, you had much more freedom. Sounds very similar to kind of a lot of Western cultures. And I'm assuming that it's certain degrees of freedom, like... Like maybe you didn't have to work in the fields underneath like a uh, landowner or something but also you would probably be forced to marry somebody because that's the system like high class women got educated wrote books and poetry and enjoyed the status of their husbands i made this too big i made this a little bit too big yeah that doesn't sound too terrible certainly Like, I can definitely think of worse, worse things, for sure. No. Why is this like this? Were they able to pick who their husbands were and stuff, or no?
But women generally were possessions. They existed to be married and bear children, and men had the right to take on concubines, had sexual liberty with maid servants and such. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. That's about how I was kind of envisioning it. Seems to be the standard for most patriarchal societies. Yay. Yeah, 100% arranged marriages. Yeah, that makes sense. Two completely off, off topic things. One, those flowers look great, but I hate that kind of flower. And two, before I can set up the Discord thing, I need actual rules. I don't know. Uh, be kind to each other. I should probably look at rules that other discords have and then kind of um, expand from those. Yeah, rule one, don't be a dick. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah. I feel like there, I might also have like different rules for different subsections, like the, um, like the little discussion thread area, the little subform things. Um, I feel like should have some rules regarding like, hey, ask people if they want a bunch of pushback on, on stuff or whether they want softer debate. Um, I think I might have like each section and same for like critiques or maybe I should have it all in like one larger rules section so when people are looking for rules that actually makes more sense have it all in one spot so it's where it should be when people go looking for it um what was I gonna say? This is due to the fact that Confucianism was both a moral and political philosophy, so the social order was strictly adhered to because the government could only function when the public were well-ordered. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I do feel like there's... Like, I can't... As much as I like um, the concept of, of anarchy, and I like the vibes, <laughs> um... I do feel like there's uh, some level of organization to the chaos that I feel is necessary for a productive society where people like me don't die. Because I like being alive. Well, for the most part. I enjoy some aspects of being alive and would like not being alive to be my choice and not just a consequence of a shitty society. However, not wanting to be alive is also the consequence of a shitty society, so... There's that, also. For per-channel rules, there's spaces for that already? Oh good, okay, that's nice. That makes sense. Maybe then in the larger rule set, just being like, obey the uh her channel rules i feel like that would probably be close enough, close enough. And we can have tags categories for the threads. Nice, yeah. Yeah, because I wanted, I I had, I made a bunch of, I did food prep this week and I wanted to post some pictures, but then I was like, oh, I should really make um, a little channel for pictures. And then I didn't do that because I was tired and doing other things. So that and then like a fitness channel or something or oh and one for games so we can organize uh game nights and stuff there's been like five different channels i've talked about making um on stream and then 
I've been like, yeah, I'm absolutely going to do that. And then life has been kind of busy and crazy, so I haven't... I haven't. That's the word I was looking for. That was the end of that sentence. It's just that I haven't. But yeah, it's one of those things where I have more stuff to share and I would be more active in it if I finish making all the channels that I want to make to be active in. That's working. Okay, cool. I'm gonna draw this weird, dumbass, strange little baby flower on top. Why are you uh, studying Confucianism, dishonest? Array? It's funny, I feel like I am... my brain is more inclined to call you dishonest before Ray because of uh, being in Discord previously and thinking of your name as that. But I call so many other people in this channel by their name names that I will make an effort to get my brain on the right track in terms of that. Well, this brush is working the way I want it to for this. Yeah, it's nice. I like when that happens. Also, I had the weirdest dreams the last few nights. I think because of like the um, sleep deprivation to, due to thumbs yelling a whole bunch. Um, you're an Asian studies. Oh, wait, let me scroll up. I missed one. Basically, the goal in society was to be moral, and men were moral when they were when they married and had sons, and aspired to do their job as best they could. And women were moral when they bore sons, were clean and beautiful, stayed out of sight of other men, and obeyed their husbands, and were chaste widows. Chast, chaste, chaste, right? Um, an Asian history studies major. So you had to take a history class, and this all was all about gender in Asia. And my teacher is a Chinese professor, so we are doing end of imperial China. That's cool. Word of that sounds very very nice. Yeah, I definitely do not know much about any of that at all, so this is fun new learning for me. Uh, I don't remember. There's so much that's very similar but different. Similar to what? Similar but different to... Uh, what? Also, which flowers did you hate, Zaros? The little small puffball ones or the big orange leafy one? Or oh, Eastern and Western philosophies? Yeah. What are some of the uh, more distinct differences, would you say? Because definitely, um, Women being clean, obedient to their husbands, and out of sight sounds very, very westerny for sure. The smaller puffy ones, really? That's so that's so funny and unfortunate. I don't mind them as flowers. Um, they're not. They're definitely not up there as like a favorite flower. I think are the larger ones calendulas. Is what my brain is telling me it is. Ha 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 ha. I think I'm right. They're, they're, yeah, and cal calendulas are good for something. I don't remember what they're good for. Marigolds? Are marigolds and calendula the same thing? No, they're not. Okay. They're asters. Okay. What is calendula used for? Much like calendula tea or something, right? Huh. Wound healing and skin health. I've probably had it in like a, a skincare thing. Also, I feel like I just got a cat hair in my eye and I might die. We're gonna move on. Um, the other little ones are... Are the little ones baby calendulas? Or just asters? Maybe they're asters. No, they're not asters. Oh. 
There are a lot of small fluffy purple flowers. Holy shit. That is not the thing to search if you want to figure out what this flower is. Just as an FYI. Yeah, I'm gonna give up on that. Irises! I, yes, I like... Okay, oh my gosh. Fae flower, I love hydrangeas also. Hydrangeas and chrysanthemums. Hydrangeas and chrysanthemums are so good. Um, Eastern philosophy has a greater focus on family. Spider lilies, are, li spider lilies are nice. What's a wisperia? I don't know what that is. Classic roses, but cool colors or rhododendron. I don't know what wisperia... Wisperia. And I know the word rhododendron, but I can't think of the picture. Oh, wisteria? Do you mean wisteria? Because I love wisteria. Or is there a plant called... A plant called... Did I say planet? Interesting. Um, rhododendron... Oh yeah, I've seen those. Those are fun. Very delicate and tissue papery looking. Very, very pretty. And yeah, I like roses also, but I like kind of like weird. I like the big fluffy roses or I like the little tiny baby roses. Um, and I don't like the pro flowers, kind of like prototypical, like pink, red, orange, bouquets i like peachy soft muted kind of like antique colors for sure and irises irises are fucking great iris oh chrysanthemum national flower japan that's awesome um lily of the valley there's a big grove on the way to work woods where i worked what's the lily of the valley i'm pretty sure that one's super all lilies are toxic to cats i believe lily of the valley oh i love lily of the valleys Maybe those aren't toxic to cats because they're the little snowbell looking things. They're beautiful. I like those so much. Those are awesome. Um, but back to irises. Remember the other day when I was like, what's the word for dark periwinkle? There's like not a word for deep dark periwinkle. It's fucking iris. It's the color of irises. So thank you for reminding me, Amanda, because that was another thing that I meant to... Uh, bring up yeah 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 i made a uh, so there was this browser add-on when i was looking for plants for what to plant in my garden out here um there i got a browser add-on to highlight text and i went through and i compiled um a bunch of different poisonous pl plants lists and then added it so that when i was looking for plants it would highlight them if they were toxic to cats um, but then I added too many things to that list and it started crashing my browser. So, um, I was going to like post it on Reddit and be like, Hey, I compiled this thing, add it to this add on. If you're like a plant nerd and want to get a bunch of plants, but also don't want your pet to die. And most plant websites don't categorize by like pet safe or not. Um, but yeah, I don't have a good method for, for doing that without crashing browsers, unfortunately. But I wish that that was a thing that somebody would make, like a plant website where you could order seeds and plants and filter them by pet safe things because so many things are... And I would like it to list things that are like, yeah, this is just a skin irritant and it might make them puke a little, and stuff that's like, if your cat breathes the pollen, you have like two hours to get them to a vet or they're fucking dead. Like, cause those are very different things. Lily of the Valley is not a lily. Okay, good. Yeah, I think I've heard them called snowbells before. Or snowdrop. Oh, snowbells are something different, but they look very similar. Snow Bellflower versus Lily of the Valley. While snowdrops and Lily of the Valley look similar, they are actually part of two completely different plant families. They can be distinguished by the fact that one snowdrop flower will come from a single stem. On the other hand, Lily of the Valley stems hold a great number of flowers. Neat. Is that different from Snowbell? No, that is a Snowbell. Okay. Unviarnia? 
a convalaria? Cool. Then they won't murder my cats. I love that. That's good. I thought that this year, so when I first moved into this place, I grew a shit ton of plants and it was super awesome and amazing and I had so much fun and I loved it. And then that was 2020. The pinky purple one are chrysanthemums. They're just like little baby chrysanthemums. Mini chrysanthemums? Oh yeah! Wait, so these are mums. I feel like I hear the little ones called mums. And big ones called chrysanthemums. Yeah, these are mums. Okay, I did not know that mums was short for chrysanthemums. That's hilarious. Uh, it makes so much sense. Oh, they're toxic to humans? Rip. Oh, well. Okay, I'll do my best not to eat them. Um, but yeah, I had a whole beautiful, like, vegetable... Right? I didn't connect the dots on that one either. I um I had a whole vegetable garden and I had a bunch of oh alyssum. I love alyssum and also what are those um what are those plants that are uh they like they kind of look like this. They have like a bunch of big green leaves and then they have no they have like long stems and then they have a bunch of like little firework these are big plants they have them they're like um landscaping plants sometimes i know the name for these because i grew up with a bunch of these my mom would grow these alliums no maybe they're in an allium family but there's a word for them there's they're like um i feel like it's a multi-part or multi-syllable word They have like a big green plant at the base, very big and green, and then thin little, very thin, very long stems with like lots of little doop, 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 doop. What are they called? They are called? No, definitely not alliums. And landscaping flower? I bet if I texted my mom, she would know. No, it's not that. This. That's what it is. That's another one that has the same iris color. They have like light colored agapanthus. Hang on, here, agapanthus. Um, these. And they have like the little light periwinkle colored ones. Make bigger. There we go. We have the light periwinkle colored ones, but they also come in that rich deep iris color too which is cool apparently they come in pink my mom had the white and periwinkle colored ones um i would love to grow some of these i'm pretty sure they're toxic to cats though unfortunately but yeah see what i mean about the big green foof, foof, foof at the bottom and the long little yeah the deep purpley one is so gorgeous i love it you know what i really want to grow but i can't because they're poisonous to cats what the fuck are they um Oh, I can't remember. Is it begonias? Maybe it's begonias? Because there's a ton of different begonias, but I don't think it's this one. Begonia hybrids. Oh, those are so pretty. I would grow those. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I want to grow all these. I love peachy like beautiful gradient color plants these look absolutely like they're from like a vintage painting or something i really like that this isn't what i'm thinking of i should go through my um gosh that's so pretty i think it is begonias because those are absolutely lovely i would love to grow those but i'm pretty sure begonias are super poisonous to cats begonias poisonous to cats yeah intense burning that's really probably Oh, but maybe surprisingly toxic. Okay. Calcium oxides. Those fuck up their liver or something, right? Soluble calcium. So it's not just... See, this is what I had to go through before. Where it's like, it'll cause intense burning and irritation, cause excessive drooling and vomiting. And it's like, okay. Some of those seem like it, it's bad, but it's not going to like immediately kill your pet. It's just going to be 
a problem. But I'm pretty sure soluble calcium oxalates are the thing that go in their liver. Kidney failure. Okay, it was their kidneys, not liver. But yeah, so. No begonias for me, unfortunately. Which is very unfortunate because they're a beautiful... So I... Yeah, that's the thing. My mom uh, never had to deal with cats that ate plants, so she had a ton of plants growing up that were poisonous to cats. Um, and so there's a lot of plants from my childhood that I'm like, oh, I would love to have these. These are so nostalgic. And then I looked them up and was like, oh, well, because two of my cats now think that all plants are like personal salads for them. Um, I can't do that. Delilah is the first cat that I've had that has been this much of an annoying little shit about eating all my plants. To the point where when I first got her, uh, she thought her name was Delilah No, because I would have to tell her so much not to eat the plants that she was trying to eat. Because um, my room had, was full of plants at that point at my old house. Um, and I had to slowly move them higher and then she would climb higher to get them. It was, it was a whole lot. Delilah is a plant? Delia? Is that a, is Delilah named after a plant? Oh my god, it's a type of dahlia. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, no wonder she wants to eat plants. She's a dumb little cannibal. cannibal. No, it says Deli Delilah is a type of dahlia. So maybe it's not, maybe that's just like the name of a subspecies of, of, of dahlia or like a specific hybrid or something, but you were right regardless of if your brain was thinking of dahlias. So congratulations. I do like dahlias also. They are also beautiful. Also poisonous. There are so many fucking poisonous plants that are so, so pretty. And it's so, so annoying. <laughs> I, uh... The thing is, like, at one point I was like, man, it'll be weird someday when I don't have cats and I can have all the plants that I want. But I don't think that's, like, ever a life I actually want to participate in. I don't want to live a life without cats, so... I'm pretty sure I'm just doomed to always have to have cat safe plants. But maybe someday I'll have a cat that doesn't care as much and will allow me to have plants without trying to eat them all. That would be very cool of them. It would be very nice and chill. Maybe someday. Certainly not for like Hopefully, like, a decade. You're too stupid to just plant a bed of catnip. I have tried that. And uh, I got cat grass, too. But my cats don't have self-control. Um, so they just ate both until they threw up. It does become a little bit of a part-time job. So the thing is, that's something... So something that... Um, one of the things that I want to do is go back to school to become a therapist because I think I would be good at it and I like talking to people about their problems and I like helping people solve problems and I like psychology. I like all those things. And I was talking to my psychiatrist about it and I was like, yeah, that's super far down the road because number one, I don't have time to do that. And number two, like I can't afford it. Um, but she was like, I was like, yeah, I'd love to also help like ADD people because I feel like as an ADD person, I've had to come up with like a lot of interesting workarounds and life hacks that I feel like could benefit uh, other ADD people quite greatly. And like, I was thinking of making like, I don't know, like a YouTube video series or something. Um, she suggested being an ADD coach because you don't have to get a license to coach people. And I was like, oh yeah, that's why there's so many scummy life coaches and stuff. Um, but a different option would be making like a little YouTube series or something. It's minimum six years of school and several years of clinical training. Yeah, exactly. So I would be doing this like in my forties. Um, but yeah, I was thinking of get a psychology degree, Dr. Pep. I want to be Dr. Pep. That'd be so fucking funny. 
yeah, I, I would love, I love psychology. I, I really truly wish that I understood how my ADD worked when I was um, in high school and like after high school trying to choose what I was going to do for college because I was like, well, it's important to get a degree. So I'm going to do something that I know I can accomplish and that's easy. Um, so I'm going to pick fashion design and graphic design. Well, with ADD, picking something easy is the stupidest thing I could have possibly done because that meant it wasn't a challenge or a puzzle. There was no novelty to it. It's stuff that I'd already known how to do. And so it was like pulling teeth to do it. And then I started having my nerve pain disorder symptoms. That's when that manifested. And so I was doing like finals my first year and I missed like three days of finals because I had nerve pain for three days. I went to like the first two days of final finals while in nerve pain and I was like suicidal by the second day, went to the hospital the third day. They treated me like I was drug seeking and I left and then the other two days of finals, I just stayed in home in bed. Oh, cool. That was super helpful of you. Okay. Well, that was an old laptop that I had been meaning to plug in to see if it worked anyways. But yeah, I wish instead of doing that, I had done something like neuropharmacology because that is something that I'm super duper interested in and I find really fascinating. Yeah, no, you knocked it down, butter. I can't help you with that. I'm not picking it up right now, sorry. Yeah, it was not good. It was not a good time because uh, I didn't know... All I knew was that I was in horrible, miserable pain and I didn't know why and I would go to the hospitals and... I feel like, have I told this story in a chat before about how the only uh, time that I like actually got taken seriously at a hospital was when they literally tortured me? I feel like I, I probably have at some point. Um, but yeah, it was not good times. It was not great uh, mental health wise. Hi, Butter, are you coming to visit? That's cute. Are you gonna try and jump up here? You gonna come hang out? You come hang out up here? You can, you just gotta make a jump. And you gotta not fuck with my keyboard and tablet. You can do it, I believe in you. Jump, good job. You don't remember if it was stream or just playing games, TBH, yeah. I feel like it's a story that I've told when it's come up. It was on a stream, okay, yeah. Um, I feel like I eventually I end up talking about it to most people I know, because it comes up at some point when we're like talking about like, <laughs> the medical industry and how fucked it is and how bad it is and how many changes I would make. Um, but yeah, pharma and neuropsych are hard, but they're fascinating and interesting. I'd love to be on like the research side of things in those somehow, but I feel like that's, that ship has sailed at this point. Um, for me because I feel like that's like decades before I would get to a like really cool place in that um like where I would be where I would want to be eventually whereas I think with therapy um six years or something like it's been it's been seven years since I streamed and what did I do in that intervening time some good stuff but not a lot of good stuff not as much stuff as i wanted so if in the next like six years or something like that or if three years from now i have enough money to do that or two years or one year who knows um then i could do something like that and then six years from then be a therapist for people that would be fucking tight i would love that very cool and then just think of neuropharmacology is like a a special interest or a hobby because that's what it is right now anyways to the point where um i'm in enough medical subreddits that i've started getting ads for scrubs now which is really funny to me um i feel like if somebody saw the list of subreddits no one would be able to guess what my profession is from the subreddits that I'm in. You'd definitely be able to guess that I'm ADD. 100%, that's super clear. Um, research means you have to become an expert and I can't be an expert. <laughs> that's funny. <sighs> I mean, being an expert in one small specific thing 
I feel like that's doable for most people, but it does definitely take effort. The problem is I want to know a lot of things. And I don't know if I have the mental stamina to analysis. Really? Oh, I would love to see what it would guess about me because... <laughs> I, yeah. I follow so many different reddits. Some because I'm interested in the topic, some because I like red pill stuff. I want to keep an eye on like the discourse in that arena and know kind of what threats there are to me. Um, some stuff is fascinating because, not because I want to pursue it, but because it's just interesting stuff. Um, and then other stuff I is stuff that I'm interested in because I do want to pursue it. So I would be super curious what our Reddit analysis engine could analyze from, from my stuff. I feel like I would confuse it. Oh my god, okay. I'm gonna open that. Hi, Butter. Why are you rubbing your face on my hand? Oh, I wonder if it only takes from where you've posted. Because I don't think things can see what subs you follow, it can just see what subs you're active in. Which is also cool. Um, 985 comments. I am 1.5% controversial. <laughs> Aw, the kindest meter here. Let's see what this. Here, I'll drag this over. We're gonna we're gonna experience this together. I am ninety four percent kindness, but I have a very low text readability. What is the flesh formula? Flesh, flesh. Flesh reading ease formula is a formula used to gauge difficulty or ease of reading and understanding of a text. Two primary metrics in the formula are the number of sentences and syllables per hundred words in a passage. Oh, so I'm super verbose and wordy. Flesh Kincaid grade level. Learning to read books through Gruffalo, Harry Potter, Jurassic Park, Brief History of Time, and Academic Paper. Oh. Aim for grade eight to ensure your content can be read, read by 80% of Americans. Interesting. Top subreddits. Am I the asshole? Relationship advice, vindictive rates, loves, dally, technology, change my view, oddly terrifying. Ask Reddit, keeping up with Kardashian snark? That's so weird. Eerie Skies. Oh yeah, Eerie Skies is pretty good. Most frequently used words. People, things, work, feel, right. Remind me. <laughs> Sex, life, having, months, love, thought, better, absolutely, women. Comment activity over time. 46, 2022. Interesting. Comment karma over time. Ask Reddit is your top. Nice. You're 97%? You, you beat me in the Submission activity over time. Wait, I would rather not view it as cumulative. Oh, but can it be if that's just... Oh, from 2012 to... That makes more sense. Submission karma over time. Comment. Okay, this is a much more interesting chart. That's cool. But this is all 2020. This is just the last year or so. Interesting. Controversiality over time. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, this is the best comment. I wish there was a link to it. Um, the morbid reality one was a rough thread, so it makes sense why that's the most controversial one. The Dunder Mifflin one was... I wonder if I can find that. Um, because I feel like you guys will appreciate this. I wonder if I can just Google that text then at all. My keeper broken. One. Yes. Okay. So there is there was this post of a woman giving birth, free birth in the ocean, and then there were some comments that were, um. Somebody said that's what the umbilical cord is partly for, of course, to prevent the baby from floating away in the tide. And I said, wait, it went away. Oh, this is so annoying. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. Why did it not link it? So yeah, and that's why I said this is actually where inspiration for surfboard leashes came from. Little known fact. It was a good bit. I was 
it's one of those things. Yeah, that worst comment is a doozy. It's because in that thread, there was something where it was where um, it was in morbid reality. It was one of those threads, which is a horrible kind of dark subreddit. But I feel like I follow a lot of those because I um, also my nose ring, I think, has a cat hair stuck in it and it's really irritating me. I swear I'm not picking my nose. I'm just trying to deal with whatever cat hair is there. Um, it was it was a um, do you guys know that case in Australia where that guy kept his daughter like locked up in a basement for a while and then she had his kids and stuff like that? There was another case like that where um, there was a mom and a husband who did that. And then when they interviewed her, um, parents, the dad was super creepy and horrible. Oh, if you guys don't know about this, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, it's real dark. Um, fuck, I forget what his name is. If you like Google Australia... I'm not even gonna- I feel like the sentence that I was gonna say there is probably not good. Um, but yeah, it's a real grim story. There's a lot of grim- grimness. Um, but in that thread where there was like a, a woman and her husband and the woman was encouraging a similar scenario of um, uh, having a bunch of kids, then keeping them captive, and then also adopting kids to keep captive and then abuse um and then when they okay i'll put my name in this one when they interviewed her parents after she was arrested and after the trial and everything i don't remember exactly what the her dad was saying so like the grandfather of those children but i remember he said stuff and i was like that's a whole bunch of red flags all in one spot um but a bunch of people disagreed and were like, there's no excuse for her behaviors. And I was like, I'm not making an excuse. I'm just saying that like statistically, um, a lot of things you've, you've said you like. Shiny rock? That's awesome. Um, is that for you? Because that also could apply to me. Text readability calculated using the gunning fog index. What's a fog index? Fog index is 14. Text complexity is high. Oh, neat. You're in a relationship with your boyfriend, people in your family, mother, you have these pets, cat, things you've said you like, patterns, nooks, <laughs> metrics, mustaches, plenty of boomers? No. Spending time, lean men, fashion, you are artist. I like to discuss relationships, sex, fashion and beauty, male fashion, pets, animals, health, female fashion, makeup, survival, self-help and motivation, dating, fitness and nutrition, and aquariums. Interesting. I like to discuss... Social science and humanities, pets and animals, education, art. My locations of interest. I like to play Destiny. You like to discuss psychology. I like to discuss nursing, botany, and medicine. Feminism, design, my religious beliefs, atheism, my hobbies and interests, crafts, design and decor, automobiles, woodworking, photography. I like to watch The Office. Maybe like a decade ago. Most wholesome comment. My least wholesome comment? My least wholesome comment is I'd rather be remembered for giving someone the $20 they need to get themselves through an otherwise miserable night by using drugs than be remembered as a miserable judgmental asshole. Damn, that's wild that that's my like least wholesome comment because the person that I was responding to was a horrible asshole. There was somebody, I, I was saying, there was somebody who was, who was diagnosed with a terminal illness. There was somebody who was diagnosed with a terminal illness and had posted on Reddit asking for things, ideas of what to do with his money. Um, and one of the comments he made was, I've worked my entire life and have no debt. For transparency, I have no interest in giving you money, so please do not ask me. I'm purely looking to enjoy my time left on earth. And so I'd commented, you don't need to give every beggar that asks, but going to a low-income area and giving $20 to $500 to random people who look like they could use that amount is a nice feeling. I remember random strangers that have gone out of their way to be kind to me when I needed it most, and I hope someone will remember me that way when I'm gone. And then somebody replied to that with, yeah, it really helps those give those beggars money so they can spend it on drugs. Might as well keep it for yourself. 
And that's why I responded, I'd rather remember, be remembered for giving somebody $20 they needed to get themselves through an otherwise miserable night by using drugs than be remembered as a miserable, judgmental asshole. Um, that's so funny that so many people hated that comment. Rip. We train the machine, we need data. Help gather data by answering the question below. This will help the machine generate cooler statistics in the future. Below is a random comment pulled from Reddit. What is the emotion shown in this comment? There's a small few today. Goto's DR being the most recent example, but nothing made me ask awesome. since book three. I don't know what that one is. I have no idea what that's relevant to. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this is the uh, subreddit breakdown. Lifestyle, general, hobbies and interests, science. Fun stuff. Top subreddits by number of submissions, Eerie Skies. That makes sense. I've posted a lot of stuff to Eerie Skies. Help Reddit Metis by categorizing the subreddits below. Oh, okay. That's about it, it looks like. Please hold some comment. Did you see that thing? Those eyes were menacing. It was a joke about the lettuce that outlasted Liz Truss. <laughs> Man, it's weird. Interesting. I wonder what metric they used to choose that. I was assuming it was, um, like, votes or something. But yeah, maybe it's just word recognition or something? Unsure. I wonder if there's like some um, thing where I could enter all the, if I could like copy and paste my subreddits and it would make a, I wish Reddit tracked your likes. I, I was hoping for that a while ago because there was something that I liked but I didn't save and I learned that they don't track or save your likes at all, which is very annoying. Um, or your upvotes, sorry. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, it's kind of unfortunate, but also that would be a lot of things. And also, I guess sometimes I don't really wish it would track those because sometimes I'm just using them as like a, I support this message. This is correct kind of thing. I just need to get better organized with my stuff. Mainly, is this about right if I go like that? That would be the right proportions, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I uh, I ran into and I was sad about that. Because I upvote a lot of comments. But now I've gotten good at obsessively saving stuff. Um, if I want to remember it. To the point where now it's like actually no longer helpful because I've saved so many things. This is a problem that I ran into. Once I start, I have a problem with filtration. So sometimes I'll like and save too many things because what if I do want to um, use it in the future? But then um, sometimes when I do need to retrieve something that I've saved, there's just such a mass of stuff to delve through that it becomes daunting. Life is difficult, is what I'm saying. That's the kind of shit that I wish AI would help with. I would like AI to help me organize my brain. Can we get people working on that? I feel like that would be very, very, very chill. The horny, you're, you won't ever run a Reddit user, you just press enough. So the thing is, I feel like Reddit is kind of like TikTok, where it's, it is what you make of it. Um, I really want to get my mom onto Reddit in one of like the quilting community, because for every, for every special interest, there is a subreddit for it, which is what's fascinating. I can learn so much about so many random things that I wouldn't really be able, like communities that I wouldn't readily be able to get involved in in real life um 
Like, I feel like it would be hard for me to go randomly be an electrician or get to know a bunch of electricians um, without, like, studying to be an electrician, probably. But I subscribe to a lot of electrician subreddits and some um, subreddits for laying tile, for example, things like that. And now I know a whole bunch about a lot of those things, and it's really fucking interesting and cool. Um... So if you just fill your Reddit with stuff like that, you'll mostly have just like a neat, interesting time. Or if you fill it with hobbies, like special interest Reddits, rather than kind of um, like special interests in terms of crafts or hobbies. I feel like those Reddits are probably better mental health wise than a lot of other <laughs> reddits most likely and the horny baby is downstairs somewhere i think oh wait no she's sleeping in the must be visible over let me see no i'll scooch over have two, three, four out of five cats up here. Yeah, you. See, is that about right? Just kind of over my shoulder? Okay. I don't know where- oh, I can bring my tea. Oh, it's cold now. I also let it steep too long. <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so Reddit, basically, I feel like it's largely what you make of it, like TikTok. Um, so if you just curate wholesome things, then you will probably only see wholesome things, largely, unless something makes it to the front page of Reddit, and then whatever wholesome sub ends up getting brigaded by a terrible mass of everyone from everywhere. Because yeah, I am gonna get my mom into like the cross stitch and like quilting subreddits. I think those would be really nice and lovely for her to be in. And embroidery and textile design. There's like, and there's like specific ones, there's specific like sub subreddits for each of those things that are like um there's like nintendo cross stitch which my mom probably wouldn't go in but it's interesting how many like how hyper specific i don't know reddit's just a very cool place i think there's a lot of reddit is like a kind of analog for the entire internet in some ways where it feels like because there's so much there, some of the places are horrible and abysmal, but a lot of them are also good. So it's just like the internet where it largely depends on where you go and what you make of it a little bit. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I feel like I rambled a lot. Oh, hi, Butter. There's the fifth cat. My goodness, where have you been now? Yeah, that's nice of you. What a pleasant, pleasant little summary she gave me. Yeah. I feel like I've told this story, but Butter didn't used to meow at all. But in the past few years, she's really... She has discovered her voice. And she talks... Oh, so much. She's a very talkative baby now. It's very uh, wholesome and endearing most of the time. I... Oh, this is off. This is super off. I need to... Um, oh, oh, 
gun. And then go like this. Oh no! Okay. Okay, this is gonna be fine. Oh, I love when I draw things on multiple layers. That's gonna go... Like that. I know, Butter, I hear you. Now, where is the layer that has... Got it. Okay. Okay, much better. I just need to go like that. Yeah, I do. As much as I sometimes get annoyed about talkative cats when it's like, like Nusha, for example, loves singing the song of her people at 3 a.m. I don't love that so much, but if the option, if the other alternative is for her to not be a talkative cat at all, I wouldn't do that. I would much rather be her, I would much rather have her be an annoyingly talkative cat and just deal with the um, suboptimally talkative times, then not have her be a talkative cat at all. Oh, I, that is not the case for me. So congratulations to you. I am very jealous. Sounds very, very nice. I wish I had that gift. It is. I dated a guy at one point who he could tell his brain, like he would lay down in bed and be like, okay, I'm gonna go to sleep. And he would tell his brain to turn off and it would, which is insane. Like that's not a real thing that people can do. Um, but apparently it is, so. Just mind-boggling to me. Which cat is that that's yelling over there? Is it a lotion? No, that's a butterstone. Your brother's like that, he's out in like five minutes, but he, you think he has undiagnosed sleep apnea? Yeah, it's wild how um, how common uh, undiagnosed sleep apnea is. I mean, it's not that wild, I guess, given how, like, the state of obesity in America. Um, I don't know if your brother's obese. I'm just speaking in general. There's, I feel like I know a lot of cases of people who are like, oh yeah, I found out I have sleep apnea and it's because of weight gain. But sleep apnea is so fucking dangerous. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's interesting. It can be. Uh, there are different kinds of sleep apnea. There's like a neurological kind. I want to say both are improved with weight. No, 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 no. Um, Probably the neurological kind probably wouldn't be improved by weight loss. Um, I'm unsure. Um, I know it would probably be worsened by weight gain if the person is overweight and has neurological sleep apnea, because then you also run the risk of developing just like the kind of um, your throat muscles kind of failing you in your sleep kind of shit. Um, so maybe if you are overweight, maybe it would help the you know, neurological sleep apnea to lose weight, but it's not going to cure it because it's neurologically based. 
Also, this isn't exact. I'm just making up this area of it because I don't feel like redrawing this whole area. So, just bear with me on this one. Um, I do want to finish this tonight. Maybe Amanda would know more about this. I don't know. You want to get him a sleep study, but that stuff is expensive, and so the CPAP mask, so is the CPAP mask he probably needs. I feel like um, I feel like insurance covers CPAP masks usually. Um, my friend had to get one. He has sleep apnea. Um, I'm pretty sure it covered that. Um, but sleep studies, yeah, I'm supposed to get a sleep study, and the one at the San Francisco, they have a really excellent sleep clinic apparently, which is super cool. But, um, it's like five grand for a sleep study there. So, who knows if I'll ever get that someday. And it's one of those things where, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, right, Amanda? It's one of those things where sleep apnea, it can impact so many aspects of your life. It can impact your... I mean, you're basically not breathing at night and that can impact how hard your heart is working. It can impact your brain because your brain's not getting enough oxygen. It can impact, um, it can make you depressed, low energy. There, it impacts not breathing, unsurprisingly, can impact a lot of facets of your life. And not breathing while sleeping, which means you're not, you're also not getting good sleep not getting sleep can also unsurprisingly impact a lot of areas of your life um so yeah it's one of those things where it sucks that our healthcare system sucks as much as it does because the preventative care of like getting a sleep study might prevent somebody from like needing like blood pressure and heart meds for like later on in life um, you know, there was a, um, sex worker I knew who ended up getting her client diagnosed with sleep apnea because she went on a, uh, a trip with him and she literally ended up having to sleep in the bathtub because his, his snoring from sleep apnea was so irregular and bad and she ended up taking a video of him not breathing more often than he was breathing uh during the night and showed it to him in the morning and was like bro you got to take this to your doctor because this isn't just normal snoring this is like you're gonna fucking die if you don't address this shit and um he ended up getting sleep uh, diagnosed with sleep apnea and he, his doctor said it was some of the worst sleep apnea he'd ever seen and he ended up with a CPAP machine and now is like off of the heart meds that he was on previously. All kinds of stuff. It was very, very cool. It's funny finding out ways that, um, non-standard ways that sex workers help people. Yeah, the snoring is bad. He, yeah. I have asthma also. Um, thankfully it's only exercise induced, so as long as I don't try to do anything uh, fun or energetic? Fine. That's totally wholesome and normal, right? No, but thankfully I got my inhaler again recently, so I can actually engage in, uh, fitness activities. Is this good? Does that go like that? This is another weird one that I'm kind of making up this fold as I go along because this is the area that I fucked up. So this is gonna be... A little bit made up. Fine. Yeah, okay. yeah, you might have exercise induced asthma. What's funny, it's not funny. It sucks. Um I have never been able to successfully run the mile for PE before, and teachers used to like get mad at me about it because I I could play soccer and I could do dance. And so they're like, clearly you can like 
exert yourself, but you just can't run the mile and would act like I was just being lazy when I would literally like collapse and throw up when I would try to. Um, and it turns out that's all very common with exercise induced asthma. And I found out I had exercise induced asthma the year after I graduated from high school and was like, I want to go back and yell at every PE teacher I've ever had for being assholes. Nice. Yeah, some people with exercise-induced asthma can. Um, but yeah, it, uh, apparently, it is not abnormal for people with exercise-induced asthma to not be able to. And that should have been a sign for people to be like, hmm. If this person is, like, clearly into fitness but can't run the mile without feeling like they're dying, Maybe we should look into that. But just like with my ADD, people were just like, no, this is probably a personal problem. This is probably like a moral failing uh, on her part. Laughing too hard also makes you wheeze. That's funny. Have you guys seen those people that laugh? I don't even actually know how to describe it. Um, also, hang on, let me take a... Ooh, yeah, we're making a ton of progress on this. This is going good. Work on the center. Yes, saving is a good idea. Correct. Thank you. Um, I wonder if I should. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna copy and paste this flower up here into some of the other flowers because I think this will work for some of the more angu angular. I can say words. Um, for some of the more angular flowers. So oh, man, I thought that, um, I thought that this long sleeve turtleneck was going to be warm enough for hanging out tonight, but it is still cold. Hi, little baby. What are you yelling about? Oh my goodness. You're just going, brr, brr, brr. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Yep. Yeah. That is indeed what I'm talking about, little lady. I don't know if you guys can hear the little, uh... But yeah, the ugly laughs. There's this one... There's this laugh that makes it sound like people are... Having, like, a problem. Let me see if I can find it. This one... Yup, I hear you. This one? I know, little baby. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. That's her, um, that's her yodeling that she's been doing. Poor innocent little baby. Um... Let's see, top all time. Yeah, I hear you, little lady. Page of Laughter is a fun subreddit. I don't know why it's not loading. There's. I haven't seen any of these actually. Interesting. The one that I'm looking for... Oh man, I thought it would be right up here. I might have to find this later and post it on the, um... Post it on the Discord. Because it is one of my favorite videos. I know! Oh my goodness, Thumbelina! What the heck? I'm having to scroll so far for this. This used to be in like the top videos of all time. Yeah, I know, right? It's fucked up. Yeah, I know. 
But it's not even- I've scrolled so far and it's not on here. What the fuck? Yeah, I'll have to find this later. Um... Mute site. Bad. The cranberries like the music? Are you trying- maybe you have heard the demon laugh that I'm talking about. But it's- oh god, I'm so- I wish I could find this. It's devastating that I can't. Um, when I post it in the Discord, you guys will understand what I mean by demon laugh. That go there? No, that doesn't go there. It would have to be smaller to go there. Maybe I can put it there if I do make it smaller. No, pretty girl. Little whiny baby. Oh, who you bothering now? Who you bothering? The problem is she keeps wanting attention and interaction from people who... ...that are bothering other cats. But yeah, the cranberries are excellent. Also unrelated, well, only related in that it's the music. Um, also, my nose is running because it's cold. I'm just gonna go like this real quick. Um, the pixies are also good. I like both of those things. This is gonna be good because I'm gonna get... I'm gonna fill in the holes in the painting and then I can officially be done with these areas of the painting. Which would be very cool. Which one, Pixies Rector? Is that the one? Also, this is who I'm thinking of when I'm thinking of the Pixies. Are they the people who do, where is my mind? Where is my mind? Is that? I'm thinking of the right thing, right? I am absolutely horrible with music and song names. I don't know what that is. Oh! Not sure. Yeah, no. Life is so difficult. No. That's so fucking bad for this sad little baby. What's hilarious is she's- oh, that is the Pixie song! Okay, yes. It's- it's hilarious that this is the cat equivalent of being like, Where are the boys?! And just like screaming and crying about it. It, um, makes it a little bit more entertaining when I think of it that way. Instead of just being like, man, this- or sad screaming cat. Yeah. She just wants to bring all the boys to the yard. And is very sad that she can't. Because she is an indoor little baby. What the fuck? I know, I am, uh, listen, we, we believe in purity culture in this house. I can't even say that joke with a straight face. Cat purity culture. What a... I mean, honestly, though, like, it would be better for the world, so... I can't entirely say I'm bullshitting. You're right, I know. I'm not joking about cat purity culture, little one. 
I know you're unhappy about it, but thumbs the brakes. Other. Yeah, wow, filling in the spots with those little, um, with these other doodads is making a huge difference. What are you trying to eat? That's a blanket. You can't eat blankets. It's not foods. There's still a bunch I'll have to do manually, but... For now, this definitely helps with some of the other ones. It's so funny, I'm like, um... I have an artist friend who I like super duper respect, and I'm gonna send him at some point the, uh... Oh, where is the... Yeah, it's one of those things where I, uh, I think that he'll agree with that, but part of me is like a little nervous and I'm, I'm worried he's going to be like, you know, it would have been better if you drew them all by hand. But I think that he'll, I think that he'll agree with the philosophy that we've moved forward with on this painting of like, listen, there's no real benefit to spending time drawing every single one of these. Um. Uh, I think that's, I think that that's fine. Easy. Sometimes her crunching on food sounds like she's climbing on something. And she really likes climbing on stuff to get plants. So if I turn around and look super worried at some point, it's usually because I'm worried she's trying to eat the universe, which is kind of unkind. The, you know what I'm gonna do real quick? I'm gonna fix this corner because these were the first little ones I drew and they're not as good. This is, looks jarringly bad. That one better. See, and actually by um, saving time by copying and pasting the other ones, it gives me time to be able to spend doing the refining on little ones like this. Whereas otherwise, if I was like, oh my gosh, I really had to paint every single little thing in this painting, I probably would not want to um, deal with going back in and refining all these. Yeah, I know. I see you. Yeah, I hear you, little baby. I do. Goodness. Yeah. The printer draws each one. The printer is a real artist. That literally came up in the discussion of AI art stuff where it was like, okay, logically we don't consider printers artists even though they can produce these images. So how does how does AI end up being different from that measurably? Can you guys hear her when she yodels like that? It's very loud over here. And I feel so bad. Saddest little horny baby.
Buckley looks better. Ah, uh, oh god, I clicked too much. Two, three, four. So there's four. You can't unsee the nose in the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, at first I thought it looked kind of like a moose knuckle at first. So I'm really happy that my brain has shifted to nose. Um, that's definitely preferable. Okay. Oh, there is one more over there that I need. Oh, all these flowers. There's one right there. Okay. Another one. Section one, two, three, five. There. One, two, three. Those at the bottom corners. I'm gonna fix the shading of that though. And one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I have seven more. Yeah, I hope I didn't put that too much in your brain, Amanda. So I have seven. If I draw one that fits all those other seven, then I'll be set. Yeah. So baby. Littlest, whiniest baby. Yeah, I know. Is your life so difficult? It's so sad. It is, I know. Life is so hard, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Okay, I think I am gonna draw the two little, one little flower down here and then paste that elsewhere because then I will be able to be done with all these little flower bits. And that'll work because it is one of the ones that needs to be the super sideways flower. Okay. And a lot of the other ones are also super sideways flowers. Oh God, why do I do that? Exclamations. No. Oh, it's when I accidentally, so what happens is it's when I move it with my fingers, but I'm holding my tablet pen in my hand. And then when my fingers release, it's close enough for my pen to register on the tablet. Wait, how does it moose knuckle? It just looks uh, like fabric, like, hang on. I try, I want to illustrate this. I gotta collapse those ones. Uh, right, that collapses those. Yeah. Just for having her toy around. Anyways, so, uh, moose knuckle, let me create a new layer. Moose knuckle. Anyways. <laughs> is that TOS? I don't think that's, I hope that's not TOS. That would be very silly if it was TOS. Ah, oh God. I didn't mean to do that. No, wrong color. After I finish all these little parts, and the last parts will be doing the top of the image and drawing a little a kitty herself. The difficult part of this illustration is going to be making the cat look like a cat because, and I did another illustration for Brian uh, of this cat and it was equally hard. I also did a tiny little sculpture for him. Um, when he needed one for a little bowling prize he was going to give out. Um, ears are such a fucking defining feature of cats 
that with, when it's a cat without ears, it becomes very difficult to make it look like a cat and not, for example, an otter. Like, it's very hard to make a cat look like a cat without ears in some, in some ways. Um, especially if you're doing kind of a minimalist cat or if only part of it is showing. So that's going to be interesting. True. Very true. Um, gosh, she's such a sweet, sweet derby cat. I wonder if I can show you guys the, if I can find the amazing picture of her. Um, the one that I always think of when I think of her was this one picture that Ryan posted of her on Twitter. And it was when she was playing with a with an adorable cat toy. And she was just being an absolute little goober. This little weird earless goober. Um, let me just finish this little section and I'll find it. Um, but yeah, she was this street cat who was absolutely terrified of people. Um, but Brian worked really hard on socializing her and I took care of her for a month while he was out of town and worked really hard on socializing her. And, uh, for about like two months, maybe like a month and a half before she passed away, she had gotten to the point where when he was working on his laptop and stuff, she would come and snuggle next to him and hang out with him and stuff. And even before that, she had gotten to the point where she was super chill with people. She liked pets. Um, she would sometimes play in people's presence, but she was still a little bit iffy on that, which, you know, she'd been a street cat for, they said seven to 14 years, because apparently it's hard to estimate age when it's a street cat, because some of the like, markers that they use to age cats can also just be caused by difficult times like being on the street so um they were unsure of how old she was but after spending seven to 14 years on the street i feel like it's pretty understandable to be a little bit wary about playing in in front of strangers but that was pretty normal and uh reasonable for her This has been a good exercise for drawing flowers because um, historically I've been awful at drawing flowers but I feel like these all actually look like what flowers are supposed to look like for the most part. So that's good progress wise. I feel like I would do a better job painting them but because painting is just Line art is not as much my strength as painting is, but it's still better than um, I would have been able to do previously, I think. So I am happy with it as a progression. Oh god, I fucked that one up a little bit. Oh my god, why is it so much like that? Look at that little corner. Oh, I hate that, that little corner.
this is gonna dramatically change the level of done this painting is. Basically it's just gonna be the that center section and then the top part and then all of this is gonna be technically finished. Oh my goodness. Render my ooh no. Where did it go? Do I have to click on it to drag it? I do. Okay. That one looks so bad. I'm gonna take away the color and see what it looks like real quick. Oh wait, and the blue. A little bit busy in some areas, but these are very busy flowers and it's gonna be a very busy painting, so I feel like that's part of the vibe. There's one flower that I'm missing. Oh, that little one. Reading on that to make it make sense. So I think that's the issue with some of these in the middle is that the shading on them. I made these too small. So this middle part is going to be a little bit made up too. It's fine. Oh my god. It is what it is. Yeah, it's one of those things where I know I wanted it to be more exact, but since I didn't do like a grid or anything to accurately place anything on it, I'm pretty like okay with how the proportions of everything are um and i don't mind having to make up some parts of it but uh it does mean i'm gonna have to wing drawing some flowers which is i'll do my best i think i can do it we'll see we'll see how it goes and... Oh, no, I didn't mean to click that button. Stop. Oh, I see what's happening. I see how I keep accidentally picking up colors. Absurd. Okay. I'm just gonna collapse all these. So those are all collapsed. That's all collapsed. A little bit more heat.
I'll eventually have to get more tea just to be warm because it's cold. Oh, wait. <laughs> Roll my sleeves down and then I'll be more cozy. Thank you for the encouragement. It definitely helps. I can't wait till it's warmer again so that I can um not be cold, number one, but also wear cuter clothes. Yeah. Looks like that. Let's need something. You know what I should do? Yes, big enough? No, never mind. I was gonna say, slut it up, but only when it's hot out. So, like, I, yes. However, I realized that I can wear cute little short slutty dresses if I get some of those, uh, those fleece line tights that look like they're transparent, but they're not. But I think that's a good, uh, little winter life hack for getting to wear that plus some boots and some some socks some like knee-high socks even i think that's a uh but it's hard to do something similar on top because there's not like arm tights unfortunately which really uh cramps my style a little bit Interesting, what an interesting sentence. The fact that there's no arm tights cramps my style. I mean, it's not incorrect, but it is a very uh, interesting and silly sentence to say with a straight face. Oh, gloves! Like Miku sleeves, but for the cold? You should wear your skirt and hope the wind is kind? Oh god, I could never. It was way too windy. Um, Miku... What did you call it? M Miku sleeves? Miku sleeves. Yeah, I feel like... If there was something like that that was like normalized fashion wise, that would work. But I guess it's just called gloves. And certainly gloves can help, but they're not as like. They're not like tights. I feel like every uh, pre roll ads are disabled. Oh, that's the other thing that I forgot to look into is the ads. And now it says it just popped up a notification that said. Reroll ads are disabled for 38 minutes, so I don't know if I hit a button that did something. But maybe I did? I don't really know. Um, but that's something that I need to look into. I need to have a channel in the Discord that's just full of reminders for me. For what I need to do on stream. Um, because I forget what I say that I'm going to do. Like, each time that I end stream, I'm like, oh, before next week, I should make an actual ending screen thing. Have I made one yet? No. Of course not. Um, but that's one of the things. Definitely one of the things I need to uh, work on. Save button. Thank you. Oh, you're subbed. You don't get ads anymore. That makes sense. Make one right now. <laughs> I guess I could. Well, but no, I can't because then I'd have to quit this program because I have to open. I can't have this and Photoshop open at the same time or it gets angry at me. Um, I can't. 
unfortunately. I guess I could quit this. Do any of you guys do this? I, I, I've heard that this is an ADD thing, but like task, switch, task switching and disengaging from one task and then like the knowledge that you'd have to like shut a bunch of processes down and then start them again, even if it's as simple as like opening and closing a program, which isn't like the worst thing in the world to do. Like that should be relatively um, simple, honestly. My brain hates it. It hates that idea. It just feels like, oh my gosh, I have to like close this program, open it up again, which is like, yeah, those are fairly simple things. The computer is literally doing all the work there. So like, why is it such a difficulty for my brain? It's very strange. The sim has been running for 10 weeks, four days, 10 hours. It's <laughs> booting. Yeah. I had to restart mine today. I've had to restart mine a bunch recently because it's been having problems. Um, and today because the camera wasn't working. But yeah, overall I resist. Because it means I have, to, I have to stop everything I'm doing. Wow. See, I do the opposite of that. Same with tabs. I'm like, if I think I'm going to need this in the next like week or so it probably the tab will stay open and programs if i think i'm going to use it in the, like the next day or hour or so then i definitely leave it open um unless i have like a compelling reason to close it like if i want to play a game or something and i can't use uh, i can't without bringing up space or something or stream things like that streaming has honestly made me, forced me to enact better, like, computer hygiene, basically. <laughs> Did I tell you I had to stop using Chrome for a bit because it crashed too much? And so I switched to Firefox, but now Firefox has too many tabs open also? Life is very difficult. I... This is what AI would be good for. Like, why can't AI make a better pr browser that, like, learns what tabs I use? Oh my gosh. Thumbelina, yes, I hear you in the distance. Oh my goodness, crying baby. Um, but yeah, why can't an AI figure out... Do you guys hear her screaming all the way up the stairs? Yeah? That's so dumb. I hate that. Also, I guess I shouldn't be using Chrome much anymore because apparently they're turning off, um, they're like disabling ad block. So you can't use ad block anymore, which is like, okay, well, fuck you forever then. Yeah, that's dumb as hell. Um, but yeah, I wish there was like some AI that would manage my organizational AI. I can't wait till there's more stuff like that because I was trying to invent like a system like that, but I need to learn how to program to do it, um, to make a to-do list app for myself because none of them function the way that I need them to. I need one that understands task prerequisites and will make a to a, like a it'll be like okay so these are all the tasks that are on your to-do list i'm gonna populate a to-do list for today um using some algorithm and understanding that some tasks can't be done until other tasks are done and i haven't found one that functions a to-do to-do list yeah i haven't found one that functions like that and i've tried to make one that functions like that in um using google sheets and i've gotten I've gotten a decent amount of functionality from it, but there are limitations to what Google Sheets can do without like actively doing like more programmy stuff. And to do that, I would need to learn. I really want to learn some kind of programming language because there's so many facets of my life that would be improved if I could make little like small programs for myself. Because I know some of them would be very simple, but um, 
but it's stuff that I would like need to pay another human to do at this point. And I can't really afford to pay another human whenever I have like a little programming whim come through my brain. Never too late to learn a new language. Oh yeah, absolutely. Math video today. That's another thing that I want to learn more of. Have I gone on this rant before about how annoying it is that uh, when I was growing up as a kid and was like having trouble in math classes, um, people were like, it's okay. You know what? You're a girl and you're an artist. Girls and artists are like supposed to be mad at math. And it turns out I fucking love math. What I don't love is homework for puzzles that I've already solved. And that's all math homework is, is homework for puzzles you've already solved. And for ADD, if I've already solved a puzzle, my brain does not want to do it. So I want to take some like Udemy math courses or something. Yeah, it's so fucking dumb. Like I, I love doing math and it's, I love logic. I love all of those things. It's fascinating. And I love like Google Sheets is one of my favorite fucking things in the universe. I live for Google Sheets and making little formulas and stuff. And that's all just like logic and math, so. And I don't know why people think that uh, artists should be bad at math. You're pretty, <laughs> you're a math tutor? Oh, awesome. That's fucking rad. Um, Maybe you could tell me what the name of is. The problem that I have is sometimes I'll need something math wise, but I don't know enough like math language to even kind of properly describe what I'm asking for to be able to Google it myself. And I even posted on the math subreddit once and I got like no responses except for one unhelpful one where the guy didn't understand what I needed. You never took calculus and you're trying to program shit that needs calculus? Rip. Yeah, me neither. I took accounting instead and I, I graduated as a CPA from high school, which was pretty cool and useful. And I still use the, those things to this day. Like, that's pretty nice. But um, I never renewed my CPA license, so now I'm no longer a CPA. That is something that I should, I should take a refresher course and get my CPA license. That would be neat. Do I actually want to do that though? I don't know. It's kind of close to natural language. The thing is, I've like learned, I used to, um, I made like a couple flash games back in the day. So I, I, and I know, knew HTML and CSS pretty well. Um, so I know that I can learn programming languages. I like, um, learning programming languages. Um, it's just that I haven't, I don't often know what language would be good for the type of project that I want to do. So then when I'm like thinking of like, oh, I should download one of those, like learn this programming language app on your phone kind of thing. I sometimes burn out cause I'm like, I don't even know if this is the right thing for what I want to be doing, which is a problem. It uses, if you need calc on the first course, I can't help you. It uses Greek letters and shit. Oh God. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. That sounds like chaos. It's the notation that's killing you. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know what notation means. But, uh, I'm gonna pretend I do and be like, oh yeah, notation, that shit's rough. Worst, worst part. Math. Musical notation? No. What's funny is I took um, like three years of piano class, but I never got good at reading the music. <laughs> like I briefly, maybe for like two months knew how to read the music and then it vanished never to return. Notation is the symbols and squiggles. Okay. Got it. No. I do not know that.
Look at how much filling in that center area goes towards finishing up this painting. Good bit. Interesting. Oh, I see. Okay. Like, failed calc the first time you took it, but it wasn't your fault. The second time I barely passed, but that's because I failed the test. You're not good with circles, okay? As an artist who can't draw a fucking circle to save their life, that's one of the things that I need to do. There there was this great series of, like, art um, little practice things that you were supposed to do every single day um, for, like, a year or something. And I had, like, started doing it at one point. And some of them were just stuff, like, just draw a fucking page full of nothing but circles every single day. And then eventually you'll get better at drawing circles. And you'll start by like drawing them like, like taking your time to go really slow. Oh my God, <laughs> nobody saw that. That was... Why can't even when I'm... Guys, I'm an artist that can't draw a fucking circle. The closest one. That's not bad. Which sucks because I love circles. Um, but then, yeah, apparently like by the end of the year you should be able to like rapid draw just like a billion fucking beautiful circles. Um, and I was like, dang, that's a really cool series of exercises and studies. I should absolutely 100% do that. Um, I did that for a few days. And then I remember what happened. I didn't have a um, good notebook with enough pages to do it in. So I started to feel like I was wasting space in the, uh, in the sketchbook I had. So I started stressing about uh, using like the backs of pages to do it, which made holding the sketchbook uncomfortable, which made me procrastinate about doing the circle exercise. So eventually the procrastination just overcame anything and I stopped doing it. Which is honestly like one of the things that I would like write an ADD like hack book out of. Like just recognizing that even the smallest impediments become something that you have to muscle through. So finding ways to remove as many of those fucking little itty bitty impediments as possible, even if it seems so stupid and so small and min minuscule, it becomes something that you have to like get through mentally. So if you can remove that in some way, even if it's like a dumb impediment, it becomes beneficial. Because I feel like there's so much messaging around like, this would be so easy. Anybody can do this. You should totally be able to do this. What? That's like an impediment? That's stopping you from doing this? And like, yeah, maybe it sounds ridiculous that something might be stopping you from doing something. But if it is, that means it's something your brain has to tackle. So why not just operate on reality and not like what should be the case. Anyways, that's my ADD impediment rant. This has been a very ranty night. By the way, please do your math homework. Drawing pages of circles is mandatory in your math class. Uh, you get better at math with practice. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. All that totally makes sense. Uh, there's that. Oh god. No. Quick. So that's that. That's that. Ah. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm almost done with this center section. This is so cool. There's not a real good spot for this flower because I placed things wrong. 
So I'm just gonna go like that. Maybe I should go. Everything else too? Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things. That's why I, I, I feel like Duolingo is really cool and uh, awesome because, like, even if you do just like a little bit a day over time, practice helps with anything. The reason people suck at math is because they can't read a word problem and understand how to solve it. Most people can do the arithmetic, but they can't set it up. They can't read a word problem and understand how to solve it. You mean like the logic of setting up what they would need to do to solve it? Because yeah, I feel like people definitely need more... Uh, I really feel like we should teach people more logic and critical thinking. For sure. Um, I don't know if that's what you're saying, but even if it's not what you're saying, that is a statement that I am making because that's what I think. Basically. Got it. Okay. You can reliably set up an equation for a word problem, but if there isn't a word pro problem, I can't make it all from scratch. Blank page with abstract problem equals no. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna have to find the layer. Okay, It's not working. It's so annoying. If there's no word problem, then it's already been set up. a certain degree i uh, there's also some stuff that it's probably because i i didn't take like the level of math necessary to like to know how to do things but i feel like i can solve for x for certain problems but then i'll run into ones where i'm like uh, what there's a bunch of letters in this that i don't know what to do with Which is probably calculus or something. I think the middle section is done. Nice. Cool. Thank you. 
Gracias. This weird section, it doesn't look right. Uh-oh. That makes sense. That makes sense. I think all the pieces make sense now. Whoa. I firmly believe that everyone can do Calc 1. You can understand limits. Get it twisted. Uh, what are limits? Oh, hey, another moose knuckle. <laughs> That's funny. They're everywhere. That's there, that's there, that's there. Limits are the basic principle of calculus. All right. I will, um, I will trust you on that. You could be absolutely bullshitting me and I don't know enough about calculus to, uh, wait, why is this? Those need to be compressed. Those can be compressed. There's that. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. You would never lie about math? That's good. Isn't there something about how, um, I need more lip balm. How math, um, is would be like one of the best ways to talk to aliens because there's like universal truths in math um they're like uh principles that only function a certain way and so that would be how you could convey um certain concepts yeah i remember reading about that that's really cool i like that so like math is the most universal uh, language i like that that seems neat Are you a sleepy boy? Oh, thumbs is like, like this on the bed back there. As like a Rosetta Stone. Well, if math is true. Oh, is that the, um, is there more to that sentence or is that, is that more like a, well, if math is true, then that works. Is that how that goes? Well, if math is true, then aliens would have to come to the same principles. Yeah, and I thought that was the concept that like there are certain things uh, that aliens would have to come up with the same principles because that's how like certain math in the world and like physics functions, right? I'm completely talking out of my ass, by the way. These are just like random things that I picked up apropos of nothing. Uh -oh. 
do everything around it and work on her very last. Ah, oh, dear God. Come on. Come on. Ah! Uh, I don't, I'm not even, my tablet pen isn't, oh, I guess it is kind of near it. Yes, basically chaos. It is chaos. I like it. It's not kind to me. Oh, okay, I thought this is gonna get okay. I do think maybe this area could use. Oh, what the fuck? That's a yellow. Jesus Christ. I think it needs more of a solid little black area in this section, not just the scribbledy kind. Here it goes. You guys know about the, is it the Fermi Paradox? I think it's the Fermi- yeah, 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 the Fermi Paradox. Fermi Principle? The Fermi something. Do you guys know about it? Not quite. Yes, Enrico Fermi. Oh my gosh, okay, you guys both know about it. I was gonna I was gonna talk about it for a second if you guys didn't know about it, but you guys are experts. I don't need to tell you guys shit. It's just a very cool and also kind of sad thing. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Sure, sure, sure. Um I made this too high. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Raid night? Is this in WoW? Oh, I guess if you popped over from Raid night, I shouldn't be yelling at you during a raid. Or bothering you during a raid. I don't know what your role is, but if people rely on you to stay alive, I'm sorry. My bad. I appreciate uh, your sacrifice or possible sacrifice of uh, teammates. You've got Raid on one screen and I'm watching the art on the other. I'm your WoW background. Hell yeah! That's awesome. I, uh, I'm glad that I can be good background media because I always need background media. Okay. Nice. Awesome. I remember I tried to get back into WoW a few years back. Um, probably like five or six years ago at this point. I don't even remember how long. I think probably one of the last times I tried to get back into WoW was with you guys, Amanda. Um, which was ages and ages ago at this point. Um, and I wanted to be a Shadow Priest again because I really like Dragonflight is super fun. Nice. Um, that would be tentatively, oh wait, I can't afford a subscription right now, but at some point I would be tentatively down to re-engage in WoW. Do you know what pissed me off? Oh, actually, no, I did try to get into WoW at the, again, at the end of, uh, 2020 and realized that they made it so the holiday cosmetics you can only wear during the time of year that the actual fucking holiday is in which is the most bullshit garbage thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. Like I want a what? I need to be able to wear the flower crown year round because I am a spring princess. Same with the Valentine's Day outfits. You watched holiday cosmetics recently? <gasps> okay. That like, that literally, once I figure that out, it fucking, 
it, it literally killed my motivation to play the game because I'm so aesthetically motivated. Um, that, that was, that was enough to, to do it in. Um, that's fucking cool to know though. Dang, I might be a little bit more inclined to play some WoW. Um, I did unlock the... I did the whole quest line to unlock the the pretty um not night elf. The like they have like a weird city. They're like one of the the races that you have to do rep stuff to unlock. Thing there the go the FFXAB hopes, yeah. You can also wear the Valentine's dress. Yes, that's the other thing I wanted. Yes. Maybe one day. Yeah, honestly, that it, it, it's one of those games that it I liked all the outfits in Final Fantasy, but there was so much stuff I liked that it became kind of intimidating right off the bat, and I got kind of overwhelmed. And the good thing about WoW is there's a bunch of shit that I already know. So it's kind of like comfortable and easier in some ways to uh, delve back into that than um, other things. But also, I don't have time in my life for like any MMO that requires any... Uh, I don't have money in my life for any MMO that requires a subscription, number one. Number two, um, that requires any like level of dedication on some weekly schedule or anything. I just got too much shit to do. Like, I would rather spend that time streaming or something, you know? Or gardening. The Nightborn! Void Elf? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that one. I, I unlocked that one and then I was working on unlocking um, the glowy uh, golden Draenei people. The Nightbird of the Fancier Night Elves. Yeah, yeah. Very, very pretty. Again, super easily motiva motivated by uh, aesthetics and having aesthetic options. That is my Light Forge and I are the gold space goats. Yeah! yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. I was working on unlocking a gold space goat. Again, for the aesthetic. I want to be a gold space lady. A gold space goat. Very nice. Oh, actually, that was another reason I struggled with uh, Final Fantasy is because I had to pick one fucking character when there's different like races of characters I could be. That stressed me out. I did not like that. I want to be more things than just one thing. I have Altitis real, real bad. You have all the classes, but you gravitate towards blood elves because hot ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I, of course I was a Vera. I, I'm pretty sure I picked Vera because I love the Vera. And but there were other classes. Like I wanted to be the cute little dragon lady class too. Or did I pick? Did I end up picking the dragon lady? I can't remember what I picked. But I remember it being a a difficult. It was a struggle for my brain. It was a thing, it was a choice I had to endure to make a character. It made my life difficult. Yeah, I wanted to unlock the uh, other classes, but then I think that was the point at which, um, I think the Christmas season came around and, cause it was late, yeah, it was like late 2020 and I think that Brewfest had happened and then it turned to the Christmas season and I stopped being able to wear the stuff that I had gotten in Brewfest and was like, excuse me, what the fuck? And no, it was the opposite. It was Halloween going into Brewfest. I was just trying to think of like, 
I don't really care about Brewfest outfits that much. That doesn't usually seem like my aesthetic, but no, it was the Halloween stuff that I unlocked and could no longer use and then cried 7,000 tears about it. Halloween stuff. Hi, can I help you? Oh, Nusha, do you want to come sit? Right, that lady. Oh, oh my goodness, Nusha is so big and fat. But she says, hello, everyone. You're such a patient little lady. Oh, fuck, I forgot. I have to lean away from you when I pet you and I'm wearing lip gloss. This last time it got everywhere and was a plague on my life. But you're a good lady. You are. It's hard to not give Nusha smooches because she is very smoochable. Yeah, F of X A V. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, apparently uh, they changed WoW, so now you can wear things all year long, which um, defeats the problem that made me quit. Do you guys see her little dumb cute face? Sarah says, I played WoW for like two days after the movie came out and it was meh. Yeah, I feel like my favorite time- Hi, can I help you? No? You don't want to smooch? Okay, never mind. I see how it is. I feel like my favorite time period playing WoW was back in the day with Classic and um, Wrath of the Lich King. And I played on a uh, private server for a while after when they moved to Cataclysm. Because I was like, no. Yeah, nostalgia is a, I think, an important, it can be an important factor for it. I wish I could play classic WoW, but with like the quality of life improvements that um, modern WoW has. Because that's how it was on the private server. That's what was kind of nice about that. Um, But also, man, I met some weird ass people on that server. I ended up dating two people from that fucking server. The internet is weird. Unless a new really good MMO comes out, I don't think you can play any other M MMO than Final Fantasy now. Yeah, I feel like, um... There haven't been any, like, super compelling... MMOs that have come out is the thing. You've tried to go back to RuneScape multiple times and it just doesn't do it anymore. It's just the best one. What makes Final Fantasy the best one for you guys? Because I feel like I burn out on every MMO I play, basically. Is there a com compelling reason why... Um, I should get into fantasy and it like maybe won't burn me out. Is there um sell me on it. Guys, guys, there's a football awards show. Yeah, that tracks. That makes sense. My family would probably watch something like that. For sure. Is it going on right now? It's got plenty to do. You don't even have to play the game. That's funny. You can just farm fish and RP. It is, it's on the TV. There's a ton to do, yeah, but I understand the burnout. What happens to me with every game is I I need to constantly have like novel kind of like engaging puzzle-based kind of goals where it's like, okay, I need to go through a bunch of steps to unlock various things to do this. And there has to be like an aesthetic reward at the end for me a lot of the time um and also if uh if um games start to feel like kind of like what's the point like why am i doing this what that's why I really liked Russ for a while. We have a house you can decorate. Who would have guessed there's an award show for sports? Your brain is blown. The fictional MMO in Bloodstein would be would probably be cool. I don't know what that is. Um, that's why I liked Rust RPG because I was like, all right, I can be working to something towards something with like long term permanent value and gains that would like last forever rather than some of like the single player games that I play and it's like wait why am I playing this I'm literally just playing this to like give my brain dopamine and feel like I'm accomplishing something I should do something in my house instead 
Um, and I get to that point with like any game I play, basically. MMO wise. Let me introduce you to the relic weapons. Okay. But yeah, like the reason I haven't even been playing Rust RPG is because I feel like I I'm scared to like invest my brain and dedicate time into something that I might not be able to maintain if life gets more stressful and I can't keep up with it. Which is annoying and a bummer. Okay, I need to make sure I'm making space for this cat in here. And I am not. I'm already not. I knew so. You're so pretty. Yes, you are. We are all aware of how pretty you are. Pretty little Nusha baby. Relic weapons on FFX TV are long grandy quest lines for the fanciest weapons you'll ever see. Interesting. Okay. So let me see if... I wonder if I can... Is this on? Might be. Used to main a DPS captain in Star Trek Online, but then the abusive free-to-play mechanics just became too much, and there was a major faux pas with the studio doing a rollback, and that broke me. Yeah, that sounds rough. Oh, you're clawing my boob, ma'am. See if. Oh, it's not recognizing the iOS camera. Darn it. I was kind of trying to do the split cam with a cat. His Nusha is here. I'll just take a picture and I'll. See you guys in a second. What are you doing? No, stop it. Don't claw your way up. That hurts. Bitch. Oh, I'm so sweet, Michelle. Okay, I'll post that in the Discord. I'm talking to you, don't you, pretty baby? Oh, it hurts. She's digging her claws into my chest. And on that, that note, gotta go. Sends long distance cat scratches. Put that in the Discord. Okay, I did. I put it in general chat. Thanks for hanging out, Chris. Hope you have a lovely rest of your evening. And enjoy the- and I don't want to get your claws out of my chest. It was, it was too bad, Nusha. You're very sweet. I need to trim your claws, though. I was trimming Ferbert's claws the other day when he was sitting on my lap. Um, okay, let me tab back into... chat. Got it. I need to make a, uh... A channel for for um cat photos. That's the word I was looking for. Or maybe just photos. Yeah, I really fucked up this whole area. I need to make this flower smaller. And like a fair amount. Maybe this whole little... 
actually make that smaller without fucking some stuff up. Maybe. You're very, very pretty. We're all aware of how pretty you are. Prettiest little baby. Like that. That'll give me space to do that. But yeah, usually like all the stuff about Final Fantasy, the combat, the characters, the story, the aesthetic, the class, it's got everything that WoW eventually got right in a modern game. Yeah. I um the classes are definitely uh appealing. And the aesthetic is definitely appealing. Hundred percent, for sure. I am one thousand percent. You know what? I need to sketch this out with a blue pen is what I need to do. Forehead. One in there. Shoulder flat. A wing, and there's a little flower there, and there. And that goes like that. Cuts down into rain. A little bit of flowers there. Black, and there's a flower there. A flower there. There. Yes, hi, Nusha. I, I do see you. I am aware of your presence. You big, fat, adorable baby. Flowers there, a little flower there, there's there. Is that flower there? I don't know what flowers those are. Flower petals maybe? And then there's green leaves there, a little bit there, and a little bit there. Feathering, and feathering into darkness. Okay. If you gave Final Fantasy one chance, I'd say trying to make it through MSQ. What's MSQ? Your secret cage. I believe it. That sounds about right. That's that does sound pretty cool actually. So I'd be on board with that. Sounds very excellent. Hey baby, what are you doing? Such a sleepy little munchkin. Sleepy stabby little munchkin. What's in the key? You've only had quiche ones? I've had some really good quiches. I've had some real bad quiches. I had an ex-boyfriend who would make quiches and they were... They were not good. They were overcooked and kind of chewy. It was not good. 
Very sad. I really got a paint. So, oh, what is that? Why did that happen? He was not. I was not sure you could do this in a day. Our quiche was simple. It was just egg and veg. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, I I had a boyfriend who would regularly make kind of egg and spinach. I think sometimes bacon quiches. Um. You don't know what a quiche is, Zaros? I, huh. Yeah, a quiche, it's like a an egg-based kind of like pie without a crust. Although sometimes it can have a crust. An egg casserole. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Oh, gross. It can be. It can also be good. Do you not like eggs? It's not a casserole as in like potato casserole or like coleslaw or something. It's been expunged from your memory. It's um, I'm hungry. I get food at some point. Um, you like eggs but not like that. How do you know? Okay, it's not. How do you think? It's kind of like. It's like baked scrambled eggs, kind of. It's like baked eggs. It's like an, it's like a baked omelet. Why did I say omelet like that? Omelet. Um, it's like um, quiches can be good. It's like a deep dish omelet. Yes, Amanda, that's a really good way of describing it. Omelet. Oh, your step kid, do you see? Oh, okay. So you really do hate them. Interesting. I feel like quiches can, some quiches can be good. So I'm surprised that they're like, you have such a visceral like hatred for them. Maybe, maybe your stepdad used to make them the way my ex-boyfriend used to make them, which was overcooked and rubbery and bad. However, when I've had them in like a fancy restaurant, for example, delicious. Totally wonderful. I can understand why people love quiches when I've had them at, at fancy good restaurants. Um, I knew Sean. You are so incredibly unhelpful right now. What are you eating? What do you have? Oh, it's your own fur. Okay. Stop. I thought you were eating something you shouldn't have eaten. Okay. Omelets are great. Yes, I fucking love omelets. Man, I should make an omelet. Do I have stuff to make an omelet with? I don't think I do. That makes me very sad because now I kind of want an omelet. Life is difficult. I think this Sunday I'm going to try and go to the farmer's market. See if I can get some good, good groceries there. I think it's mostly a mixed together thing, which is why you don't like them. Man, because I am a mix everything on the plate together, regardless of if it comes together kind of person. I want to experience... This is why I fucking hate... I hate chunky salsa. Because if I'm trying to put salsa on some chips, I'm not trying to eat a whole like weird watery marinated piece of tomato. I'm trying to eat tomato with cilantro and jalapeno and lime juice and onion. Who's breathing weird? Oh, butter's packing. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But yeah, I want to experience all the flavors that are supposed to be in salsa, not a fucking deconstructed salsa. If I wanted a deconstructed salsa, I would eat a fucking salad. I have very strong feelings on this. Because I have some family members that prefer the um, funky style salsa, and I think that's the most cursed thing. It's just ridiculous no no pico de gallo it, pico is in small enough chunks to make it okay i'm talking about when there's like a chunk that's like what is it a size um i don't have anything that size because i feel like nothing should be that size at a restaurant and there's a 
there's a piece of tomato in it that's like this fucking big and it's too big to even put on a fucking chip. It's ridiculous. I hate it. Pico de Gallo is fine because usually it's like, it's like end of this tablet pen sized. That is a good size for Pico de Gallo. That's acceptable. But chunkier than that, you start to get into problem territory where you should be eating a salad instead. Pico is excellent, yeah. I like mixing pico de gallo with like a um, more blended salsa. I like the freshness and the the like crispness of the flavor of pico de gallo. Um, but I also feel like sometimes it needs a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, same. Like when I make salsa at home, I generally make pico de gallo. But if I'm eating salsa at a restaurant, yes, lime and cilantro is the way to do it. Yes, lime and cilantro are like the gods of flavor. Lime, cilantro, lemongrass, spiciness, basically heat, cit citrus, and then like freshness of flavor. So like lemongrass or cilantro and stuff like that. Mint can some like mint cilantro chutney. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so hungry now. Why are we all talking about this? This is my life is so difficult. Um Yeah, mint cilantro chutney is very, very good. Hi, stay home tomorrow. Too sick. What do you mean? You're staying home tomorrow? Because you're too sick? I'm sorry. That's no fun. Sorry about that. Well, at least tomorrow's Friday, so you'll have a, um, a weekend to recover. Oh, well, it's good that you're going to the doctor at least. Uh, I'm sorry, you really can't lay on my tablet though. I'm having to use one hand to... So actually this is the perfect um, painting to do to have an unruly cat in my lap because normally when I'm painting I'm switching colors a whole bunch or changing the size of a brush. So I need my left hand. Um, right now I just am keeping Nusha still with my left hand so that she doesn't get on my um, tablet. Um, oh, it might be COVID? Shit, I'm sorry, that really sucks. I hope it's not. I will be sending non-COVID vibes your way. Oh, speaking of which, I'm getting a COVID booster possibly on Saturday. So depending on how I feel, that may put Monday's stream at risk. Um, Cause the last couple times I've got gotten a COVID shot, it hasn't been great. So, um, we'll see. I will keep y'all updated on how I feel. What's my cat's name? I, uh, the cat that's currently in my lap is named Nusha. Um, then I have another cat that's sitting next to me named Butter. And then there's another cat on the bed behind me named Ferbert. And then there's another cat further back on the bed named Thumbelina. <laughs> yeah, that was the, which one is the, is a good question, honestly. We got a lot of cats. Oh, and it seems like Nusha's trying to get up, so I'll be able to sh make her say hi. This is Nusha. She is a big, fat, annoying, sweet baby. Um, who was trying to sit on my tablet, and I don't really want her to. Okay, okay, yeah. Would you like to exit? Here, let me put you 
There you go. Oh, all five cats are up here right now. How cute. Oh God, I have cat hair all over my face now. Oh. <laughs> and my lip gloss. Lip dye. Lip dye. Okay. Moving on. Yeah, she is a darling. She's a, a little Siamese tortoiseshell mix. And she is a noisy little princess. She sings the song of her people every morning at 3 a.m. Um, usually with a toy in her mouth. That is her microphone. Is a little spring and mouse toy. And it always fucks with my sleep, but... It's very sweet of her to serenade us, so I try my best to be thankful for her, for her singing, for her uh, musical generosity, I guess I could say. You love this cat. He being you shock. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Oh, he brings you, does he bring you socks? Cause that's adorable, if so. Um, Two of my cats, Nusha and Thumbelina will play fetch. Oh, that's cute, yeah. I love when, when animals bring you good stuff. It's very cute. dirty socks. I hear that um, animals usually like dirty socks because they smell like you and they're comforting. It's comforting for them. Then he been, <laughs> that he's been hunting? Yeah, that's cute. Very, very cute. What's... Does this register as the side of a cat's face? Oh, he's been hunting rabbits? Yeah, yeah. This is a, yeah, this is the like memorial photo of um, uh, my best friend Brian's cat when she passed away. I'm not sure if I was putting off doing this part because I knew it would be difficult to render a mostly white cat without ear- yeah. I wasn't sure- I'm not sure if I was avoiding this because rendering a mostly white cat without ears is difficult. Um, or if I was like sad to be rendering sad little sweet dead baby. Cause she's a good little lady and I miss her. She was, she was such a good little miss. But I'm happy I get to do a sweet illustration of her. And yeah, that's what I mean about it being difficult to um, identify that it's a cat from when she doesn't have ears because I feel like ears are so um, kind of like integral to how people read cat shapes a lot of the time that it, it's tricky. Aw, thank you. It does need another little flower in here. Or maybe another little bit of blanket. Go like that. This 
flower. I know it's burgundy and has some shades in it, but I think I'm just gonna make it black. Minnie looked at the ref the whole time you were doing it the last time and didn't notice the kitty. Yeah, that's what I mean. She just looks, she kind of blends in with the, with the, um, with the fabric. And also, since she doesn't have ears, she, she just looks kind of like fluff. She's just a little bit of fluff. Sweet little nap and fluff is what she looks like. Such a good little lady. Yeah, nope. She is the fluffy blanket. It is it is she. Uh, so the story of this cat is she used to be a street cat. Um, she's somewhere in between seven to 14. She was somewhere in between seven to 14 years old um, when he adopted her. And when they found her, she had skin cancer in on both of her ears, which is really common in white cats, apparently. Um, and especially white street cats who've lived on the streets their whole lives. Um, so they removed both her ears to try and get rid of the cancer and she was doing well for, um, some time. He got her in March of 2022 and she lived until December of, uh, 2022 and, um, the cancer just came back and, uh, it's a uh, brain cancer in cats is uh, it's difficult. So he uh, they weren't able to treat it any further. So he had somebody come by the house and put her down super peacefully in the place that she felt safe. Oh my gosh, I'm okay. It's just really. I'm happy she got to be put down at home where she felt safe. I wish that could happen for all cats, you know? Instead of having their like, instead of having to go to the vet and be scared. It's nice that she got to uh, be where she felt safest. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good cat. I just don't want to cry and fuck up my makeup, but... I am wearing waterproof mascara because my eyes just water normally, so maybe it's fine. <sighs> but yeah, so, uh... Very peaceful. Very peaceful death. She went to sleep and that was it. Oh my god, I think I also have a cat hair in my eye. What the fuck? And not in a way where I'm like, oh, I'm crying because I'm not crying because I'm sad because I have a cat hair in my eye. I mean, I'm crying because I was sad and also it feels like there's a cat hair in my eye, which is ultra cursed. It's just hard because, like, yeah, it's both. <laughs> it's amazing that you, like, can know a little creature for, like, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Nine months. Um, and care so much about them. Not even. I mean, my fucking Thumbelina, who I thought was going to die, I knew her for a month and I was attached. I was ready to go to the ends of the earth for that little idiot. <laughs> so it's just funny how animals mean so much and can uh 
get themselves so stuck in your heart so fast. But that's what makes them great. Super wonderful. And it's one of the things where, like, man, it sure sucks to have to deal with pets and pets dying. Um, but it's that whole phrase of, like, better to have loved and lost than never loved at all. I strongly, strongly, strongly believe in that one. Little creatures leave big footprints on our hearts, yeah. Oh no! I'm sorry. I remember you talked about Falcon before. That's like another weird phenomenon where, um, I know you're technically like my IRL friend, but we haven't hung out in, in real life for a long time, but it's one of those things where you, like, hear about your friend's pets, like, on the internet, or, like, just, like, hearing the name of someone's pets and seeing pictures of it for a while. Even- you can even get attached to them that way a little bit, and, like, knowing that they're gone is like, oh man, fuck. That was an institution. You have you have more pets, uh, still Amanda, right? You have a menagerie. I remember both you and Harry are very pet people. You've got um, your other little fur and feather babies to um, help comfort your heart. I hope. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Okay. Super rough. Yeah, that's like such a um when I think of you guys I, I definitely think of like a a pet zoo a little bit. Man, that's the fucking dream though. I I love that. Someday I will have a farm. And I'm gonna have, maybe not a farm, maybe just a place with like a big enough backyard that I can have some chickens and a dog. And then I'll have my cats and chickens and dog. And it'll be so cool and nice. Maybe a goat or an alpaca. Would be very cool. And then I could get alpaca wool and make alpaca wool things, which are so soft and I'm not allergic to them. You have ducks. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a kitty or two is probably a, um, that's, an, that's a reasonable amount of pets for most people. But yeah, getting two kitties, if you end up getting a cat, see if you can get a, um, a bonded pair of kittens. Cause then you'll, um, You'll have cats that will keep each other entertained and take care of each other and be super sweet and snuggly and lovable and adorable. That's just amazing. Duck bites? Oh no! Why are your ducks mean to you? That's so mean. They got no respect. No respect at all. Waterfowl are, no fowl are notoriously a-holes. That's so funny. I feel like maybe I got, I've gotten lucky then. My grandparents used to live at this, like, um, uh, gated community, like, old folks place. And there was a wonderful pond full of ducks. And my grandpa 
and I would go there and feed the ducks all the time and they were like really nice when I was a kid. Um, they were pretty chill. But I have heard things about like uh, geese and Canadian geese being nightmarish. Definitely heard that for sure. You fell down in winter help? Oh, Jesus. Dang, surgery and everything. I had no idea ducks were so, uh, so deadly. Oh no. Am I drawing on the blue layer? Oh, fuck my entire life. Uh, okay, this is fine. Okay, that's a future problem. Okay, everything's fine. Well, I will figure that out at some point. Good grief. The past two years have been brutal. Someone stole it. Are you fucking kidding me? Jesus! The two bunnies died and then Blizzard got cancer and passed them all the past. You're down to one dog and two birds. Fuck, I'm so sorry. Somebody stole Lando out of the fucking yard? Jesus Christ. That's awful. I feel like that's... I don't know. No, no pet loss is good. But... I feel like that one would... The, um... Like, at least with... With cancer, you usually have a little bit of time to kind of think and come to terms with it um sometimes not always um but like accidents or just like sudden losses are so difficult then was old and sick and didn't have long but it doesn't make it easier yeah you would want his last year's to be with you not just gone that's so fucking rough i'm so sorry god fuck people jesus every once in a while i feel like most of the time i try to use i feel like i have a little bit like i have some super like ocd superstitious nonsense um and like we were, i was talking about this the other day i think like fortune cookies I feel like um, I do a thing where like if you don't eat the fortune totally before you or you don't eat the cookie not the fortune sorry you don't eat the cookie then the fortune doesn't come true um, and little things like that most of my little OCD like superstition things are usually kind of wholesomely based but man the uh, next time I have a um superstitious moment where i can wish something i'm gonna wish that those people get what's coming to them and that karma will uh have something for them in the end because there's no way that it won't It was a split second. Somebody grabbed him while our roommate's back was turned. Jesus. Insane. That sucks too because it's like... How can you feel safe having pets in your own backyard? That's so destabilizing. Yeah. Like, so on top of the... On top of the pet loss, you have to deal with so many other fucking things. Jesus. I'm so sorry you guys had to go through that. 
What? Greg Hawk? Is really? Is that really? Because that's hilarious, if so. Amazing guesswork. <laughs> oh yeah no i hear i hear things about people's dogs getting snatched in san francisco like on the street when people like leave them outside of stores and stuff um like if i had a dog in the city i would be i would not want to leave him outside of the store and for a while it was just like purebreds that, that that was happening to or dogs that like look like breeds that people would want but I, I heard like a lot more during COVID that it was just happening just like to fucking any dog, any dog at all. And so it's always like a little bit ugh, when people, when I see people's dogs just in front of stores for like um, extended periods of time, I just don't think I would feel safe doing that. Um... But out of your, in your own backyard, that's like an entirely different story. That's like you did all the right things that you're supposed to do to keep them safe. The only way to stop dog crime is a good dog with a gun. Yeah, sounds about right. I support guns, but only for dogs. That's my stance on gun control. Yeah? One new pet? A bread dragon? What's a bread dragon? Whatever it is, it sounds fucking cool. And Spike is an excellent name. That was the name of the dragon in uh, My Little Pony, the My Little Pony movie. I think, right? Did anybody, did anybody watch those movies? Bearded dragon, got it. Okay, that makes sense. Listen, my brain is slow today. Didn't we watch like the old, like the old, old, uh, My Little Pony and Care Bear stuff? Not the, not the new stuff, but like the old, old school ones? There, uh, that was good stuff. I gotta find him again. He's so fast, that's adorable. Goodness gracious. hear one of the cats snoring in the background. It's really cute. Uh, it's Lucia that's snoring. A little baby. I love cat snores. This little, like, Crafted wheat thing is hard. Little cousin got an iguana? That's fucking awesome too. Dang, you guys have lots of cool pets.
You had a snake once? What kind of snake? Oh no. That's not good. Sounds uh, suboptimal. We found our shed skin under the bed, but no snake. That's how you get those stories of like, um, like sewer alligators and stuff. And she escaped into the yard. That's good. I had a friend who, um, she, she, um, she kept a bunch of poisonous snakes and spiders. And, uh, we, we were talking, this was way, way, way back in the day. I, she was a WoW friend, uh, a World of Warcraft friend that I made. Um, and we had asked her, she lived in California also. And we had asked her what she would do if, uh, if there was like an earthquake and like a big one where you, if she like heard glass break in the room where her uh, poisonous pets were kept. And she was like, I would leave that room closed for a few days. And then I would carefully open it and see who the victors were. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's insane. Um, because she had snakes, she had, uh, spiders, she had, um, a couple poisonous frogs, I think I want to say. Yeah, I think she had, like, some salamanders too, maybe? S snakes live a good amount of time sans food. Yeah, I think she was mostly hoping that maybe the snakes would eat the spiders or something possibly i'm not really sure but uh yeah it seemed it seemed super gnarly it seemed like not a responsibility that i would want to have and i'm happy that i don't have to deal with it basically Guys, we're nearing the finish line on this. I still can't believe I drew on the same layer as the blue. I hope I can. I know I could correct that in Photoshop. Oh god. I'm gonna have to... If this was Photoshop, what I would do... Let me see if I can do this. Maybe I can... And I can get rid of it that way. We haven't been much exposed to love or darkness. Does she know that? She knew it about you. Oh, it still counts as white, though. 
Okay, so I can get rid of it, but it's still gonna be... White alpha. Okay, so this will work. Yes! Oh, okay. Oh, thank god. Oh, good night. I hope your doctor appointment uh, goes well tomorrow. It is a pretty color, but I needed it to be on a separate layer, and by not, um, by not, um, having it on a separate layer, it was a big mistake. Big mistake. Terrible mistake. I accidentally drew it on the same, I drew, I drew black over it on the same layer. Oh, you streamed tomorrow night? Nice. I don't know if I'll be around tomorrow night to watch things. Usually I've been, um, Victor also wanted to stream with me on uh, about something on his stream, but I feel like I'm the past few weeks and the next couple weeks Possibly more than a couple weeks are gonna be really insanely busy for me um, Eventually hopefully my schedule will settle down and I can dedicate time to actually like being online to Say for example watch other people's streams um, But right now I am still in like light chaos mode. But if I'm around, I'll come tomorrow, I'll come check it out. What time tomorrow? Oh, uh, post your, post your Discord link. You should also join the, um, here. Join this, oh god, what did I do? Oh, weird. That work? Oh, nice! We both did it. <laughs> what did I post before? Stream elements and, okay, so I gotta figure out what stream elements is. And like disable it or something. I'll figure it out. Add a cooldown to commands. Oh, how do I do? I'll, I'll look into doing that because I also don't know how to do that. <sighs> but that is a good idea. That would have been, that would be very very smart actually. Yeah. That is a very good idea. I concur. These lovely pine needles, I think is what these are.
Man, I can't believe that... For some reason, line art paintings, my brain just doesn't ever see like an end in sight to them for some reason because it's like um which is weird it should be the opposite of that it should be that normal paintings feel like they have no end in sight because you can't always just keep painting more to them um but for some reason my brain processes line art paintings as somehow more interminable um i don't know why that is but my brain was starting to feel like there was never going to ever be a finish line to this one which is very silly um, cause I, I've made like a decent amount of progress on this each time I've worked on it. So it was very clearly just my brain being very silly. Um, but I'm happy that we're like almost done with it. It's good stuff. All art makes your brain make modem sounds. Yeah. Uh, relatable, honestly. Very, 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 very relatable. So it's just this uh, upper corner over here, and then we're done. Amazing. Ah. Those are also hard to um, illustrate. It's the harder things to illustrate have been stuff that I would, I feel like I could do well if I was painting using a paintbrush. Um. But are difficult to do with. Fuck. Where is it? Is it this? Where is the layer that has the lines on it? Oh man. Oh, there's a layer with the lines on it. Whoops. Going on that one? Yes, I did. Or when you answer the phone during the face. That's funny. I wonder, there are like, you know there's like kids who don't know what that sounds like. Who have no idea what you're talking about. Who would have no clue. Oh, there's also somebody who was like, Getting, I can't remember where this was, but I feel like there was like, I was reading a, not reading, listening to like a TikTok or something that was like, Gen C kids think it's dumb to say dial a phone number. And it's like, motherfuckers, you still dial it. Like you're still pressing fucking buttons. Okay. Like chill out. You're a better. Yeah. I also think I'm a better human because I experienced bad internet. You know, it was, it was good for building resilience and growth. Also, I don't- this is something that I need to think on, too. I'm a better human because I- or do I have more resilience? Is there value to- no. I think that I'm answering this as I'm thinking out loud. Um, that yes, there- the internet is better now, but it was like a horrible cesspit, um, like battle, not, uh, Baron's chat in WoW or 4chan or like, um, video game lobbies where people would just like completely tear you a new one and like how kind of, um, tame and peaceful the internet seems now by comparison. Um, cause there's kids now who are just like, they think that the internet is like a super duper like brutal harsh place nowadays and it's like i mean i guess it can be in terms of like internet bullying and stuff but just in terms of like language used it's really fucking not we've really come a long way but also i feel like that makes me like a bit of a boomer where i'm like in my day <laughs> the internet was so much worse so like that makes you a baby for thinking it's like bad now which is very boomery to uh think but also i do feel like in a way it does oh, what did i do how do i close that no go away um 
it does kind of uh like like um why is that colorful now no 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 Weaker before smartphones exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's one of those things where it makes me appreciate the internet and... Where the fuck did my window just go? Um, It makes me appre appreciate... Appreciate? I can say words. It makes me appreciate the... Gentleness of the internet now. Um, But I shouldn't... A moth just flew by me. I hate it. But I shouldn't discount the, uh, that it can still feel, like, horrible and vitriolic to people. And that they're right when they think it could be improved, you know? Dusty flies, yeah. Man, I'm gonna be so mad. I, um, there, we had a bloom of, like, cloth-eating moths. And I couldn't figure out where they were coming from. And they were eating a... I Like, I, I tried to find all my fucking wool clothes. We, like, boxed up and vacuum-sealed wood uh, wool blankets. In some spaces, the internet is gentle now. Um, but yeah, it turns out that they were... They were feasting on a wool cat toy that it was at the bottom of a cat toy basket. And I didn't realize that it was a wool cat toy. So no matter like what we did in the rest of the house, the um, they were still thriving because they still had that delightful little wool cat toy to uh, thrive on. Very rude of them. Um, but yeah, I do think that places like... I feel like there's a lot of what I perceive as... Oh, that sucks, Amanda. Yeah, moth, moth outbreaks just any kind of bug or or um, creature outbreak is just the fucking worst. Um, what was I gonna say? God, like I had an ex boyfriend at the time. We got rice weevils in the bag of rice, and he was just like, "It's more protein. We're not gonna buy a whole nother Costco sized bag of rice." And he let that go until rice weevils started escaping from the pantry and climbing the walls and the rest of the roommates. And I had to be like, no, <laughs> like no more. This is, this is bad. Um, what was I going to say though? Yeah. Yeah. It was bad. Oh yeah. I have silverfish. How do you get rid of silverfish? I've never had a silverfish problem before until this house. But I find them, and they're annoying. I don't like them at all, and I would like them to not be here anymore. What do they eat? Like, why do I have them? I... I, I don't understand. Is it... A, like, it feels like a location-based or, like, environment-based thing? Like, humidity or something? Maybe it's drier in this house? I don't really know. Oh my gosh. I think this is, like, mostly done. No, wait. I forgot that I need to... Carve out where is it? This one. Okay, I'm gonna compress these layers down. And then oh, erase tool. There we go.
Yeah, this makes all the difference. Okay. I was thinking I needed to add some um, of the fur cutting into fluff. Fluffy fur cutting into the shadows. And I was hoping it would make a difference in like how it how it registered. And it does. It's good. It's dark, dry places, so your storeroom is full of boxes. They aren't a problem unless you have important papers they're eating. Probably! Fuck. Mostly, I think I need to. There's a couple like weird hard edges and a few places on it that. I think that. Maybe I'm gonna put one more layer on top of this and see if I need to... I'm gonna darken some of these areas in here to give it a little bit less chaos vibes. Give it some like breathing ability, I guess. A little bit. You see that moth fly by again? I just saw it. It's fucked up. I don't think there's much I can do. I don't think there's too much I can do for these areas. Too much more than that. I don't want to do too much more than that. I think the way to make it unbusy would be to have less of those flowers, but I it needs those flowers, so I think this is how it is. Okay. Now. You had potato bugs in the yard? You get chills thinking about them? What the fuck? I love potato wait, by potato bugs, do you mean roly polies or do you mean the nightmare alien bugs that are also known as Jerusalem crickets because apparently I learned potato bugs were roly polies. But some people call, yeah, bro, I had never seen one of those in my life before till my cat brought one in and we had moved into a new house in Santa Barbara. I had never seen those before. And she brought that in and low key, I was like, if somebody, I had to post it on Reddit to to get it identified, and I I remember being like, if somebody tells me this is an alien and isn't like a real bug, I will one hundred percent believe them and not be surprised because that shit is fucked up. Those things are terrifying looking. In Mexico, they're called face of a child. That's wh why, why. They're horrifying. They're the most terrifying things I've ever seen. Like, I'm pretty alright with bugs and stuff. I do not like those. Those things are bad. Yeah, roly polies are amazing. I love roly polies. But not Jerusalem crickets. Jerusalem crickets can fucking die. Those are so scary. I do not like those. Um, What's that song? It is on that layer. Why won't it let me? They are so big and sturdy. Yeah, like, I... 
I, I, I was scared to squish it and kill it because it was so big. So I just took it outside and I put it in the trash can. And then I tried never to think about it again. That was, that was how we handled that one. <laughs> Which, like, haunts me a little bit because, like, what if it came back out or something? I don't know. It's just terrible, terrifying, awful. The worst. Okay, this is fine. Victor, how's it going? Oh god! That sounds so terrifying, right? Oh my god. Yeah, when there's... When you can feel a bug squish when you're squishing it, that's like the... I can't do it. I just can't. Nice, chillin' was awesome. I just finished this, the little cat memorial painting, and I think I'm gonna add some color to a bottom layer of it. And, um, give a couple options for my friend who it's for. Yeah, sensory health. Yeah, 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 yeah. I completely concur. Actually, I do want to see that. Why is it not big again? This. Uh, please. Please just be centered. Is one of these, like, centering it? Oh, thank god. Okay. But I want it to be a little bit zoomed in. Please. I don't know. I gotta hold my... I am not... Like, my tablet pen is nowhere near this and it's still being... I gotta quit while I was ahead. That was close enough to... Nothing more satisfying than a crunchy leaf. Victor, did you end up thinking more on your thoughts on uh, sex work, by any chance? So I was thinking about uh, it the other day and uh, I watched on um, this show called um, Brave New World and uh, it has interesting concepts regarding interesting thoughts around a monogamy and oh that's way too pale that's gonna confuse me I would probably want this a little bit to paint um it's an interesting show is what i'm trying to say and it reminded me of our conversation i was trying to think of uh the value of monogamy in a society as the default versus um, just not having a default. Not having the default be um, not polygamy, but open relationships. I don't want that to be the default either, but just having both be options that are equally acceptable. And what the positives and negatives of that would be. That's on a different layer, right? Yes. Thank you. Being smart and good. My best. Also, no pressure to uh, expound on anything, Victor. If you're, uh, if you'd rather just chill and chat tonight. It's just something that came up earlier while I was ranting about it, and then you happened to come in. I also have strong opinions about sex work. <laughs> what are your opinions about sex work, right? 
like, are are you pro sex work or anti sex work or? I'm very curious. I'm very curious. But everyone's opinions are on sex work, honestly. It's good, we should decriminal- Yes! Alright. Good stuff, we're on the same page. Completely concur. Yeah, cute. Oh, why does it always do that? Just like flew off into space over there. Oh, God. Everything's fine. Yeah, it's one of those things where people talk about how increasing sex work in an area um, increases human trafficking, but it also increases our ability to stop human trafficking, and the studies showing that it increases human trafficking also don't distinguish between voluntary sex work and human trafficking, so that kind of negates them as well, unfortunately. There really need to be more studies that actually make an effort to distinguish between the two rather than just lumping everyone in as victims and then making them also criminals somehow because that's fucked up we just went over it in class but late imperial china thought of it as a necessary evil evil part but necessary yeah it's one of those things where uh people end up touch starved and it is not healthy or beneficial for anyone to be in that position. Like they couldn't make it go away so as long as it didn't get too out of hand it was allowed. Yeah, I feel like it's the world's oldest the world's oldest profession. It's not going to go away and it helps marginalized people. So why not make it better and safer for those people? Oh. Realize I need to dry this layer. How do I dry all of it? Try to blur down. Dry, 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 dry. How do I make money if sex workers- wait, like they couldn't make it because then they can't be exploited. How do I make money if sex workers have rights? What do you mean? I'm confused. Oh, okay. <laughs> my brain- listen, my brain is so sleep deprived. It's doing its very best to uh, exist. Blame. Hmm. Ah. Uh, that could make sense. Okay. I get. I understand. <laughs> yeah. I am. Hopefully, it's so fucking irritating. Actually, that um, Thumbelina is just like chill and quiet right now it's not it's a blessing but like all yesterday and all today like every hour on the hour she would lose her tiny little mind but maybe that means it's fading maybe she's not gonna be in heat tomorrow and maybe maybe someday i'll get to sleep again 
someday. Can't wait. That'll be so fun and nice. This is gonna add so much fucking color to this. Oh my goodness. So colorful. And I think I am gonna like try not to be super crazy precise about it. I'm gonna be a little bit precise because that's because of who I am as a person, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stress. It's gonna be kind of watercolory. It's gonna be a vibe. That's gonna be the vibe. It's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna be okay with it. Everything's fine. I just colored the wrong thing. Hemp's are capitalism brain, yeah. Definitely. Oh no. Okay, I can't throw that in there yet. That'll be blur into the wrong colors. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It's funny, it's unfortunate how um, many people don't think that way unless that that's the thing for them. Like, you're cognizant that you're like, hey, maybe? Who knows? Who knows what my future holds? So you're like forward thinking and actually considering it as that. Whereas like, some people are so, the way it's viewed and the stigma of it, people don't want to like, think of what could happen and think of that as like a possible eventuality, which is a bummer because it can be extremely helpful and I don't want to say wholesome, but it can be as wholesome as like being down and out and like needing to do something for money can be really. I feel like. Try real quick. Well, fine. I slightly fucked something up, but enough. Make me want to go back in. All of that. Okay, there's a lot of green in this painting. But also, I might need to zoom in for this. Load the brush. Oh, that's why all these were so pale, because the opacity was so low. Oh my goodness. Okay, I was struggling. Absolute silliness. Unnecessary for me to be going through the struggle. Maybe I'll have time to finish that other study. We'll see. That would be kind of cool. I've been itching to start a new one, but to start a new one, I gotta finish that old one first. So.
Uh, I just rewatched a bit about how some con conservatives make the argument that if bad people will find a way to have guns, then we shouldn't bother regulating them. But that applies to anything we can't totally stop. If people are going to traffic people, then there's no point in trying to regulate it, right? Ultimately, the solution is to protect people through legislation. Yep, I agree. Yeah, there's there's so much um, kind of conservative nonsense. And I say this as somebody who grew up like in a very conservative family. Rush Limbaugh every morning, Fox News every night. And like, fiscal conservatism is such a fucking dumb myth. It's not a real thing. Because studies always show that like a dollar of prevention is worth like ten to a hundred dollars worth of cure. Just like we can't prevent everyone from getting a DUI, but making it illegal really reduces the amount of them. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um Yeah. For sure. But yeah, the, um, it makes more sense to, instead of just, it's like, uh, absence only education. It makes zero sense. Just telling people not to do something not super functional when it's something that people are going to engage in no matter what, but making it so that it's trackable and we can do something about it is very, very useful. There should be, just from like an optimization standpoint, having there be no backup plan. This is something that I like have realized this just applies to life as well. If the only like possible results are something goes right or it's a fail state, that's, n that's stupid planning. That is absolutely dumb and pointless. Um... And I feel like that's how a lot of society kind of tries to train us to operate. Like, you get to school on time or you're fucking late and you're fucked. And it's like, oh, okay, shit. Things like that, where really there should be multiple possible options before something ends in a total fail state. Like, uh, abstinence-only education should not be the only option. It should be, okay, like, don't get an STD. Maybe don't have sex when you're, like, a super young teenager. Uh, but if you're gonna, this is how you should do it to be safe. Kind of thing. This all makes sense, right? I feel like my brain is super tired, so maybe my rambling isn't going to be as on point as my rambling normally is but I'm pretty sure I'm going to stand by whatever I say currently. Okay. Kids are going to figure out sex whether you teach them about it or not. Yeah, exactly. Exposure to a thing doesn't make someone do a thing. Yeah, I agree. Think we're done. Gotta switch them. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like the, um, I feel like we have in general a very black and white all or nothing mindset in our culture, which is already kind of dumb and bad and not good. Oh god, my eyes hurt. Um, but having that apply also to like disaster prevention, whether that disaster is like, um, I don't know, like fucking forest fires or floods or like teen pregnancy. It's just so, so, so stupid and short-sighted. Poorly, poorly thought out, maybe another word. But it's kind of also like how um, how restaurants and, and businesses operate of like either your workers are here on time or your business can't run and then you're yelling at your workers about it. Like that's dumb. That's so dumb and bad. I just have a lot of complaints about 
the modern state of things. Seems poorly, a lot of stuff seems poorly implemented. Exposure, sometimes I wonder if a little authoritarianism is good. I think for, if it's for certain things, like, like maybe I'll be a fascist about getting everyone healthcare. Like, I think there are certain things that we should be kind of like a hard line on, like doing harm to other humans with policies. I think there should be, yeah, I feel like there should be certain things um, that we do take a very firm stance on. But I think that, um, like, the implementation of that, I feel like it would only be colloquially, colloquially authoritarian. I can word good. I'm... I word... yes. Brilliant genius. Keep a little bit more. A little bit darker and older. Some people will not help themselves, and I feel compelled to help them anyways. Well, that was something interesting that came up in the assisted suicide discussion, where it was like, <clears throat> where do you draw the line on just being like, sure, whoever wants to fucking die can fucking die, like whenever they want. And I don't feel like I agree with that necessarily. I feel like we should definitely take steps to, like help people who may not even be in a position to help themselves or can't like fathom the or like can't summon up the capacity to be able to do so um and i feel like it was it was irritating when somebody was like well why do you why do you feel like they should try and help themselves and i didn't really have a good answer to that um other than just like well i think people should have the right to die if they want to i think our ultimate goal should be preserving human life um, but if, but then their comeback to that was like, well, who are you to try and prevent them from dying if they, that's their choice, they want to. And I was just kind of like, because I feel like human life has value, man. That was a, that was a tricky part that I got stuck on because I was, I was a little bit miffed. I guess that's where my like arbitrary line would be for, for, um. Assisted suicide. Oh god, no. I am super pro-assisted suicide. I just think that, like, it should be... I think that my ideal would be having a system in place where... Um, I think there should be some bureaucracy involved in that. Dangerous people jumping into it while in bad emotional states. So you have to make sure there's time in between. That was what I said. I was like, I feel like there should be some kind of, like, government agency that like you go and talk to when you want to do assisted suicide and they go over the options with you they go hey here are some like if this is like a like um situational issue here are some like social safety net programs that i can help you sign up for if you haven't tried um if this is like if this is if you need like help here's some help we can offer um but if it's something like where they've tried everything if they've exhausted all their options and they're no there's nothing currently that could help them and the only option is for them to like wait till society gets better then i think i think that people should be able to like check the fuck out <laughs> if their only option is waiting for things to get better that's not an option at all i feel like and that was an argument that came up in the discussion. There was somebody who was like, well, all these things could be changed. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of societal changes that could happen that would benefit people who do want to kill themselves now. But those changes aren't here yet. And you're basically saying, just suffer until they happen. And I don't think that's very... I, I just think that that's the height of cruelty to, to be like, hey, yeah, just wait till maybe things change, you know? Hang in there, bud. Who knows, maybe tomorrow we'll decide to have, like, um, socialized medicine or, like, a universal basic income. That just seems ridiculous.
a waiting period. Yeah, I feel like um, that's why they should talk to a person. And if you like have terminal cancer or something like that, then like there needs to be some level of bureaucracy to filter things. And I think like there was somebody who was trying to argue that kids shouldn't be allowed. And it's like, okay, kids get cancer, you know, like, what are you going to do? Just be like, I'm sorry, you have to, or like kids get like horrible neurologic pain disorders also. And it's kind of like, okay, sorry, you just have to wait eight more years in interminable, untreatable pain. Just, um, sorry, bud. But I feel like it would be better if there was, again, if there was like some level of bureaucracy so that people could help filter and make those decisions. Um, so that it's not just like people in pain making those decisions uh, in a bad moment. That argument strikes me the same as what something beyond I've had a bad week and feel like ass because depression lies. In. Yes, absolutely. Terminal illnesses are different. Yeah. But there is stuff like untreatable depression. There's treatment resistant depression. And it's like, okay. some And sometimes depression is due to like external factors that might not change anytime soon. Like, um, like uh, housing and life situations and things like that. And it's like, Okay, if the world isn't going to change to make it possible for people to have good life circumstances um, in a reasonable time frame for this person to not be completely uh, downtrodden by them, then then yeah, feel free to not stick around. And to not stick around in a way where you're like not like jumping in front of a train and causing other people harm in the process kind of thing. Um, that argument strikes me the same as what transphobic doctors use. They try to convince you that you aren't trans and delay treatment because you might be ruining your life if you're unsure or wrong. Yeah. They're getting better with treatment-resistant depression treatments like ketamine and not ECT, but with the one with the magnets. Yeah. And they're making major breakthroughs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've heard good things about that, but there are also, um, there are some people who are, like, stuck in areas where that's not available and they don't have the finances to move. Things like that, and it's like... Like, they shouldn't have to stay alive and, like, wait for it to come to their area if they don't want to. If they've decided that it's, like, interminable depression and and living is too painful, then I would like to encourage them, like, hey, maybe policy will change. It's in other areas. But I feel like at that point it would ultimately be their choice and I wouldn't want to fuck with that necessarily. Yeah, socialized medicine would help. Absolutely. That's the thing. I completely agree. There's so many things that would help, but there's so many things that aren't here yet. And I feel like being like, please stay alive and keep suffering because I hope that soon things will change isn't enough, isn't a good enough reason to make people stay alive and suffer, you know? Like, it sucks that the world is broken. And maybe the world will change and we're all trying to make it change. But forcing somebody to wait when they're suffering just doesn't seem... Um, just because it makes me feel bad that they left before things could get fixed is... Uh, bad and bad. You know? So from the, from the I think human life is worth saving, I think make sure the person is certain is a good... Oh my god, so many things. Is a good thing, but on the other hand, is a barrier to the relief they want. Does our morality about life supersede the right to die? Yeah, that's and that's the thing. Um, that's why I think there should be some bureaucracy involved so that somebody can step in and make sure that like this person has exhausted all their options before choosing even though but then yeah the person the person who was like it's their life shouldn't it ultimately be their choice to end it no matter what their reason is and it's kind of like well okay like yeah i do ultimately think that but ultimately i also want to preserve human life if possible like i think human life is worth saving so 
I do think that there should be some infringement on that right, I guess, if you like narrow it down like that. Socialized medicine would have prevented the need of a 25k go find me to cover my medical bills. Yup. Yup, yup, yup. Yeah, I, I really truly hope we get socialized medicine and UBI. Have I gone on my generic medication rant here before? But you shouldn't be able to patent life-saving medication. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. However, there should be a lot of regulations, a lot more regulations and oversight in terms of how medication is manufactured. Because generic is not always the same. People don't all respond the same to it. And especially women, because a lot of medications were tested on men and women end up getting prescribed the dosage values that were tested for men and end up with more side effects. So generics can be even more um, problematic for women. Um, and apparently autis autistic people can struggle more with uh, medication side effects as well, which is wild. I didn't know about that. Did not know that was a thing, but it appears. But yeah, the manufacturing oversight for a lot of generic medications is very subpar. The boy had an insulin sold it for one dollar because he knew it saved lives. And then the university sold the patent, and now it's crazy expensive. Yeah, you can actually make your own insulin with the original patent. It's just not very good. They couldn't even figure out the right ambient dosage for women until it had been on the market for years. They're causing all sides of the problems with the side effects. Yeah. <laughs> ambient fucked with me. <laughs> that shit was wild. Where'd you come to it? Is Ambien mommy's little help or was that Valium? Valium. Or Xanax, yeah. Ambien is a sleep med that everyone sleepwalks and has, 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 and has amnesia purchases, yeah. I at one point um, took all the dishes out of the cabinets and stacked them up because that was how you got the high score. Apparently that's what I said uh, when I was found doing that was that that's how you get the high score. You would cook that super safe. Doing things with uh, heat while not really fully conscious. Love that. A guy bought a yak? That's really funny. Oh no. Yeah, I'm completely unsurprised. 
but it's, it's you went goose hunting with a marshmallow gun. I mean, better than a real gun. That's good. Jesus. Drive, yeah, all the stories about people like leaving their house on Ambien. I at least never did that. I feel like that's the kind of shit that would make me treat myself like a werewolf and get like shackles and I don't even know. Because anything you set up while you're awake, you do have the brain power to get out of while you're on Ambien. Theoretically, I mean. Yeah. And Ray, yeah, it's so it's so super shitty that you can't get those. I our country's dumb as hell in a lot of ways. Super super dumb as hell. Yeah, Ambien was apparently never meant to be a long term thing um, for anybody. It's like it, it's not meant to function over time, but and like most people end up having to increase their dosage or they just end up in zombie mode instead of sleeping. So very, very cool. Very, very um, great prescribing standards for that drug. Haven't you all tried Lunesta? Because back when I was trying like Ambien and stuff like that, um, they had me try Lunesta and that ended up being like such a more wholesome falling asleep experience. Like I hallucinated but was aware of the hallucinating and then just conked the fuck out. But it tasted like nail polish remover. I was, I felt like I was breathing nail polish remover for the entire time after I took that pill. It was the worst. It was fucking disgusting. Genuinely, like, one of the most awful things I've ever tasted in my life. At one point on night shift, you had to take Ambien and 3 Benadryl to sleep. Jesus. Oh, I learned that I... I don't have an allergy to Benadryl? What's it called? I have a, um... A sensitivity or something? Or... <clears throat> I don't know what it's called. Benadryl doesn't play nice with me. It makes me feel like I have a sinus infection. And so, um, when they put me, there's apparently like a drug that's basically like the strong version of Benadryl. Um, I thought I was going to fucking die. I felt so, so awful. And I ended up like going down to like taking a quarter of it even at my like psychiatrist recommendation. And even then I was just like, bro, I feel, this is how I feel when I'm sick and have a sinus infection. This is the fucking worst. He was like, oh, maybe you just shouldn't take that at all. I was like, yeah, probably. Okay. Interestingly, NyQuil has different ingredients and so NyQuil feels great. Which was kind of nice to find. Fuck that up. Where did it? No, oh, I fucked that up too. Ah. I'm drawing too fast. I didn't know what I should do. I was. Adarax? What's Adarax? I've never even heard of that. Adarax is- oh! Okay, maybe that's what I took. Cool. I don't actually remember what the name was, I just remember it being a really unpleasant experience. I did not like it. It was very bad news bears for me. Ah, fuck. I 
And it's one of those things where it's like, dang, yeah, I mean, I guess I went to sleep, but I just felt like I wanted to actually fucking die uh, the next day. So like, technically, it did its job. Just horrible throughout the process. They also use it for anxiety ex instead of Ativan. Yeah. That makes sense. Benzo is a benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepine. Nice, yeah. I don't know why I'm saying nice, but I don't have a particular penchant for benzos or anything like that. I don't have a particular penchant for any drugs, really. Well, no, ketamine. When I did like a low dose of ketamine, not low, but like a um. K-holes sound terrifying. I don't think I ever want to deal with that. But I had like a, not like a microdose of ketamine, but like a, just like a chill dose of ketamine. And it was like, it was like being a kid and waking up on Saturday morning. And you know that feeling of like being like, oh fuck, I have school. And then that feeling of realizing you don't. That's the feeling that ketamine gave me. That feeling of like being able to like <sighs> breathe and relax and realize you don't have a stressful thing. Ketamine? No, ketamine is not an amphetamine. It's a, uh, I think it's pop popularly known as like a horse tranquilizer, but they're using it more for depression in humans nowadays. But it had like a, in like drug communities, it's like for, yeah. It's known as that basically. And some people would take high doses of it and go into like, uh, what's called like disassociative K-hole kind of, I, I guess it's like a disassociative state. I've never personally done that. Cause that sounds awful to me. Cause I'm a little baby and I like being in control of my body cause I'm a little bitch. Um, looking pretty good. I don't know why being a little bitch is like a qualifier or wanting to be in control of my body means I'm being a little bitch. That was very silly. People used to steal it from vets. You should never take drugs intended for it. It's, used, it's being used for treatment resistant depression now. Yeah. Um, I want to say people have also used ketamine on humans before that for other things. Like I think I think it could be used as like a twilight sedative if I'm, if I'm uh, not incorrect. I could be wrong on that though. Don't quote me. Because there's like some sedation where you need to still be like somewhat conscious and responsive to things. Um, and then there's other kind of sedation where you don't need to be. I don't want to actually know much about any of that. A lot of drugs used for animals are safe and vice versa. It's the dosage that's danger bad times. Yeah. yeah. Aren't their concentrations higher? Not necessarily, yeah. What's that phrase? Um, 
everything is a poison. It's just the dosage that, uh, there's like a better, there's like a more floral way of saying that. Like the dosage makes the poison or something. I can't remember what phrase this is, but it's a good phrase. Like amoxicillin is the same for humans and pets. Benadryl is the same. Uh, there's like a, there's a anti-nausea or like antidepressant drug for pets and humans also. Remeron, mirtazapine. And in pets, it's an appetite stimulant. And my doctor, when I was like late teens, early 20s, put me on that and I gained 30 pounds in a month. And she was like, that doesn't make sense. It's probably not from that. And I was like, I literally can't be on this drug. I know you want me to try it for like 60 days, but I'm going to kill myself if I continue to take this. It was fucked up. But that was like the most, one of the most fucked up drugs I've ever been on. I was literally like wearing a corset to try and stop myself from eating because I constantly felt like I was starving, starving. Like, like I hadn't eaten in years and was going to die starving. And I would be in physical pain from eating, but I would still be wanting to eat. It was one of the worst, worst drugs I've ever been on in my life. Like I would be crying while eating because I would be in pain and also because I was still so, so hungry. It was so fucked up. Yeah, get a corset. Corsets are fun. Corsets are awesome. Get a good corset though. Like, um, like go to a place and get measured and stuff. Those are the best kind of corsets. I think I have all these. These colors are down. And now I might just do some shading on the blanket. And originally I was going to do that in that like kind of soft blue color. Yeah, okay. I think that does. That'll make it. In the photo there isn't a blue shade. And it's more of like a creamy opaque shade. You think you're too old for corsets to do anything now though? Not at all. No, you can change your shape, the shape of your body with corsets. I mean, it, it like that within, there's probably some limitations, but you can absolutely mold your body with uh, corsets. Yeah. It's just putting pressure on, on like soft moldable tissue over time, basically. Like, it's wild the how much your body can change shape um, without intentional intervention even. Like, my shoe size when I was working jobs where I would be standing up all the time was two shoe sizes larger than it is now. And it's really annoying because I have very cute shoes from back then um, that no longer fit. It's very silly. But it's literally just the consistent like weight and pressure um, causing them to uh, your feet to get wider and splay out. And corsets are kind of kind of similar. You learn progesterone can make your boobs bigger and give you more hip fat, which you need desperately. So I want that. They will give it to me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, when I'm on birth control, my boobs get like a cup size bigger. I don't notice my hips get bigger, but I. I do know that on birth control, a lot of women end up getting lower abdomen fat. And I, I deal with that too, which is very, very, it annoys me because I, before birth control, I had a very like, I had a fucking killer set of abs and stomach. Now with birth control, I have a little tummy pouch. And I know that it's like normal and healthy, but I didn't used to have it and it annoys me. Don't want it. You need to actually work out. I would like to have a slim tummy. Yeah. You've accepted that you'll never be toy like a tiger. <laughs> yeah. I, I have not accepted that. I feel like I'm in the phase of like, I felt kind of like trapped and shitty during the majority of like the past three years and like the pandemic and stuff. 
and my body and how I feel now is a result of that and I'm not ready to accept this as how it's going to be. So I am been I've been pretty gung ho about trying to work out and change and correct for the past few years. I am determined to be tight like a tiger again. I will do it. Maybe not as much as back in the day, but I can get close to that. I am pretty sure, I think. We'll see. I feel like I will accept defeat if I put in like a good fucking college effort and try and it doesn't result in what I want. I'll be like, okay, I will have to moderate my expectations at that point. But since I haven't had the opportunity until recently, to put in that like good old college try, I still, uh, my brain is still on the, in the mindset of like, it's literally just because I haven't been able to do it yet. Not because it's uh, an, uh, an unachievable goal kind of thing. I'm kind of glad dad bods are now because yeah, working out every day and never losing weight sucks. Yeah. You have a hard time with diet and exercise, mostly because I never have motivation to do anything. Spite is my motivator, but it can only go so far. Yeah. Yeah. My motivation is that I used to feel so much better inhabiting my body. Like, things were easier to do. Um, I didn't get tired. I had more functionality. My clothes fit. Like, clothes that I like to wear. So many of my clothes fit. Um, I felt good about how I looked in clothes. And now I've, I feel like I'm tired, I've lost functionality, I... There's so much that uh, is suboptimal that could be optimized. Oh my gosh, I'm almost done with this painting. Oh my goodness. But yeah, diet and exercise is hard if you... I feel like my most success in integrating things in, in my life is finding a like way, a way to... to add a routine in a way that optimizes something else. Like one of the things I was thinking of doing was having a redemption thing where I do like five push-ups or something like that, or some crunches or something. Something, one of the things I started doing is um, while I wait for one of my cats to take his meds when I'm feeding the cats, I do stretches. And then once he's done eating his meds, that's when I put down the food for the other cats and his final food because if I have to wait. Anytime there's like waiting time, I try to put something in that. And, and fitness stuff has been a good thing to, to put in those little... Um, interim moments where otherwise I'd just be like on my phone on reddit or something and it feels like I'm doing something and optimizing a process by doing so which feels good for my brain this brain fuel This is pretty done, right? You want a few years of being caught at the very least? Meet a cute girl and get married and then I can stop the hard. <laughs> That's funny. You want to learn to do the splits, but you've been missing stretching days so much. Need to get back into it? Yeah, for sure. Flexibility is... is Flexibility and muscle mass are, um, ooh, you know what I could do? Ooh, I have an idea. Let's see. Gonna take all of these, duplicate, and then flatten, and then... What the fuck layer is that on? It's that? When did I... Oh. Interesting. Okay, well... 
Muscle Girls are in right now. They are indeed. Okay, interesting. I did put some ink on that layer. Whatever. It's fine. Um, but what I could do is mock transparency and then Do something like this. Do I want to do this though? Am I just making more effort for myself? Maybe what I want to do is just go like that and then maybe add some little details in. Maybe. We'll see. Hang on. We'll find out. I think it would look really pretty if I did that. If I do it uh, the way I'm thinking of. But also, I'm very tired and I don't know if I want to do all this. Do I want to go through this process? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, Am I going to saturate it? I think muscle girls are in right now and they're hot, but I don't think I commit to buffness, but I think I can be slim for once in my life. Um, I am, I'm not gonna saturate it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint over it with uh, a darkened tone of the color that it's, that it is, I think. Let's see how that goes. I know there's like a weird little black spot in the middle and I will correct that in a little bit. I don't know how that ended up like that, but it's very annoying and dumb and bad. Ridiculous is what it is. Nope, I fucked it up a little bit. I fucked it up a little bit more. But I think this could be nice and pretty and um, be a good variant over over having like just a simple black and white line art drawing. It'll be nice. I, this is what I feel like he should print out and have in his house as like a little Babs memorial. Her name was Babushka, by the way. This is little Babushka. A good little lady. I know, right? That's super cute. He's good with names. Brian is Brian is my best friend slash old roommate, and he uh, he came up with Nusha's name and Babushka's name. And he also is the one that came up with Thumbs' name. When he said that, I was just like, oh my god. That's perfect. What the fuck? Why did none of us think of that? But he was the one that did. So, give him to thank for that one. I feel like perhaps this is the wrong color for these flowers. I think it's too dark. I think it needs to be... What sucks is I should have done this on another layer. Can I do... This. Okay. Um, can I hide that? Is there a hide? Okay, well... Alright, uh... 
gosh, that's just absolutely garbage. I guess I can see it in the preview window a little bit. A little bit better. That's better. You know what I'm gonna have to do is, I know what I have to do. I know how to make this work. Okay. Find darkness, just go over it with a lighter color on the lighter parts of good. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I think this is the maybe lighter part color and then I'm gonna use the darker shade in the middle. And if that doesn't work, then I'll adjust it further. But I think that this will, uh, I can hear two different cats snoring in two different ways, and it's phenomenal. It's very adorable. Why are they so cute like this? How am I supposed to deal with their cuteness? It matched the darker tone in the center. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, and that's what I was kind of trying to go for a little bit. Yeah, okay. So going like this. You know, I'm probably doing this more slapdash than I would if I was a little bit more awake. But I'm not totally unhappy with how it's looking. I think that it's actually like, it seems pretty viable. Oh, especially that one in that corner, that worked out nicely. Maybe I should take one more pass of a lighter color at the edge. But I also don't wanna, I don't necessarily wanna spend that much time on these flowers. Because, cat, I didn't really understand what you were doing, but it looks good. Yeah, I think this works out alright. I think... I think it ends up okay. I was thinking of... Um, leaving the, uh, the daisy flower petals as this dark blue shade. But maybe this dark blue shade is too dark in general. I think it's not a good shade for it. Well, but there's some parts where it needs to be dark. That's the thing. Okay, well, I'm going to do the greens and then the yellows and then take another glance at it and see what it needs. None of this was really in the in the design brief, so this is all just just for aesthetics and for my benefit and your guys' benefit of getting to like look at this and be a finished product. Basically. I don't know if you guys can hear all the different the different snoring, but it's hilarious. It's very cute. Very, very ridiculous. It sounds extremely silly. Having a bunch of different cats is Definitely the bee's knees.
There's a ton of details though, a lot of the colors are duplicated, yeah. Yeah, I mean this was supposed to be just like a simple black and white drawing. Um, so adding all this to it is ultimately not necessary, but I thought it might look nice. So we're trying it. Giving it a go and seeing how it looks. So it might be nice. Oh yeah, by the way, if anybody is uh, enjoying the music and wonders what the music is, the music is by Tears in the Rain. Fuck, that's what I need to add a command to. Um, I forgot that one in the Discord command, but now the Discord command is up, but I'll have to make one for linking to the music. Um, so you can find Tears in the Rain on Spotify, and there is a link in my bio also, if you like this music. Oh man, I thought I was going to stay up and do some on the other, on the finish up that study. But damn, I'm like falling asleep part ways doing just this stuff. I think what it needs is, I think it does need a lighter, softer blue. Do the baby sleep with you? Oh yeah. I sleep in a pile of cats. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. I love it. It's ridiculous though. It's a lot of nonsense. They are, um, it's adorable when they're being good. Sometimes they're not being good and it is less adorable. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Yeah, I think the daisies need to be the lighter- oh, oh, the lighter blue. Or maybe the daisies need to be- who needs blankets when you have a cat? Yeah. Well, the problem is when it's too hot for blankets and then you still have a bunch of cats who want to snuggle with you and hang out. And it's like, I don't want to die a heat stroke. It was the worst last year when I was on medication that made me run hotter than I normally run. Um, and now that I'm not on that anymore, it's- Thank God. Um, it's a little bit more tolerable. But yeah, sometimes cats hurt can be a little stifling. Me. Not much. But it's also magical and adorable, so it's like, what are you gonna do, really? You gonna say no to snuggling with cats? Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. No way, Jose. Is that like an acceptable, is that like a socially acceptable phrase still? It is, but I don't know. What is? Uh, it is both way too hot and way too cold. Your house is an anomaly. So is mine! So because it's like this vertical house, um, it's like very, every floor is like the size of a room, basically. It's just vertical. Um, so all the heat rises, the bottom floor is 20 degrees colder than the top floor. Like without fail. It's insufferable. And my old roommate used to run the heater downstairs when it was cold, but wouldn't close the door. So all the heat would rise and then it would be just like insufferably hot up here. It was very funny. It was not very funny. It was a problem when it was happening. Yeah, it's a little townhouse. Um, it was originally built in like the late 1890s. Which is funny because I went from a different house that was built in the late 1890s, but was maintained by a slumlord. 
this one is maintained much better. Um, the landlords here are much cooler. It was also renovated in the 90s, so... Um, whereas the other house was renovated in the Never. Um, I mean, I'm sure some parts of it, like the Electoral, may have been renovated at some point, but there was so much that was still original and bad in that house. And there was so much stuff that was original and good, like the, all the crown molding and wall paneling, but they just painted over it for decades and decades without giving a fuck. And so it was just all mushy and covered up. And I really, like if I had ever, if I like bought that house, I would have gone through with like a fucking chisel and like paint, um, not paint, paint remover or something and like tried to sand out. The thing is it's all lead paint though. So you would have had to, they would have had to pay for like um, serious lead paint um, removal and cleanup and stuff. So I know why she didn't, but it still sucked because it was a really cool, it was a beauty. My old house was really cool. It's just the landlord was a piece of shit. Yeah, the landlord's special. Yep, 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 yep. That's how it goes. Wouldn't be surprised. Yay, capitalism. God, that lady was such a piece of shit. I hated her so much. She also came into our house when we weren't there. It was like really and it makes me like paranoid to this day to the point where at this house there's a problem where sometimes if you close the front door hard enough it locks itself with the lock part there's like three different locks on the door and there's one that we don't really use that often because it's annoying to reopen if you close that door hard enough it uh it locks that part and so i because my old landlord had like come into our house when we weren't there my first thought was they fucking came to our house and they locked all the locks because they thought that's what they're supposed to do. And um, I was super freaked out and like paranoid about it for a hot minute until we figured out that it was actually just closing the door um, that did it. But that was like, oof. got landlord PTSD. Super, super wholesome and good. Love that. It just sucks when like you have this is your house you're supposed to be it's supposed to be your space that you're like safe in and like can trust to be like your space and then like a landlord fucks that up and you're just like okay i guess good stuff very shitty okay now the yellow flowers Rent seeking is the original subscription service. Yeah. I hope that there I hope stuff changes with like how rent is handled and and like properties are handled. Like people should have a limit on the number of properties. Companies that create huge cost of living increases in cities should have some like extra taxes to fund people like displaced people and people living there and go towards like low-income housing and stuff there's like because cities the stuff that you want people to have in your cities um that makes a place like a high cost of living area the people that like run the stores and stuff need to also be able to live within a reasonable kind of distance to it you know Oh no, that was the wrong color. I didn't like that at all. Bad, bad. We had a computer stolen out of my house when I was younger by a neighbor. It was while there was a show on the ground. It was while there was snow on the ground. Tracks right back to the next door, so it got it back immediately. But it made you nervous in your next apartment. Yeah, that's. It 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 takes away like security for you. For. It's always gonna be like a weird little. I I feel like for me at least, it's like a weird little feeling for. Like, I have a sense of security, but that shit can go away real fast. <laughs> like, when I when I thought somebody was coming into our house, I, like, we got a little, like, video camera and everything to, uh, one uh, little wise camera things. And it's still up there just because, you know, just in case. What if I wasn't wrong? Who knows? Go. 
now. Now those look like the flowers they're supposed to look like, or more like it at least. Like maybe it needs a little bit of crunchy crunchy. And then, oop, oop, I did too much. Nope. Oh god, I'm ruining the world. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what a 386 computer is. Is that like old timey, old school computer? When I was a kid, I only had um, Mac computers, so I don't know any anything about old other kind of computers. Pre Penguin? Oh, damn. I was gonna. I was just gonna say. I don't know what. I don't even know what Penguin is. Penium makes more sense. Okay. Like, wow, there's so much I don't know about computer history. Wild. You don't think you ever met one until this house? Dang, nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've had some decent landlords in my lifetime, but the overwhelming majority of them have been not. Have been not decent. I'm really lucky with this one. This one's a really good, seems like a really cool dude. We ended up meeting him because uh, I moved in at the start of the pandemic, so I, I only met like the rental company. Um, but this past uh, in 2022, he, he was out of the country for uh, most of the pandemic. And after he finally came back to check it out, and we got to meet him, and I was like, he's a real fucking cool dude. I wish landlords were more like him. I wish all landlords were like this dude. He's not trying to like make a million dollars, he has a good income. He, this is just like a, a nice investment property for him so someday when he wants to sell it he can he can sell it. which that part's a little bit stressful for me because I would like to live here for a while I hope but um but you know could be worse you wish no landlords yes yeah that would be the ideal I really feel like a cool like an acceptable way of doing landlords would be if um everything you paid in for rent um, went into kind of like a fund for paying off the fees for this house and for repair, like basically treating it how it's supposed to, um, what rent is supposed to be like. And then the rest, when you leave, you get to take with you as like either a down payment on a house or as like a, um, or your next rental place, you know, I feel like that would be a, an ethical way to do landlording. I feel like that would be nice. I don't think many people would do that. People talk about Charles Babbage, but I had a computer before Penguins take that Steve Jobs Will Gates. Good shit. All right, what do you guys think? Do you think this is done? I feel like, oh God, I hit a button. I feel like this is as done as I want it to be because I'm tired and I want to eat dinner. Is what I want to do. Oh my god, close that. Right? Like, I feel like this is... Oh god. Oh, that's maybe why my ear hurts. This thing looks really cool. I'm happy I wore it. Um, and I want to wear it more times. But I can apparently only wear it for a certain amount of time before it starts. It's just like the other ear thing last... Not last week, the other day. Is that the word I'm looking for? Oh, this sleeping little cat is so cute. I'm going to take a picture of her. And I'm gonna, oh, I almost dropped my phone right on her fucking face. That would have been so sad. Oh, God. Have you ever accidentally tried to take a picture of your <laughs> drop your phone on them? <laughs> it's very sad. Nice. I need to get to a point where I let my drawings be finished before I'm done with them. I feel like I struggle with that and I always end up, not always, but I often end up over processing it basically. And it, and it doesn't contribute to the painting in a positive way. So I need to 
one thing that I need to change. But yeah, I think that this is a... This looks alright, and I'll have a nice... I can even do a... Oh, I didn't mean to do that like a halfway half color version oh i think i like maybe that one the best even it would have been good practice to add some dew drops though to this one but there's no dew drops on it oh you mean just to like practice dew drops yeah yeah, yeah. <sighs> do i like this i think it's it's fun Oh, your rose. Okay, I was gonna say. I was like, I mean, I guess there's spots for dewdrops on this, but the rose makes much more sense. But that is more reasonable. Okay. Now we'll export a few different versions of this. Yeah, I have to. Oh, it does! It does, and, and thanks to Amanda, I remembered to um, hit start on the time, time lapse. Yes. Um, so I will have a time lapse of this. And yeah, the ref is much warmer, but I do like the kind of primary color vibe of having the yellow, the pink, and the blue. Yeah, I did. It's still going. Um, I guess I could stop it now, but what if I have a few more adjustments right near the end? Then I can kind of... I think maybe if I did change anything, it would be to take it into Photoshop and maybe make some of the line work on in the folds of the cloth a little bit more like creamy beige colored, but keep some of the dark shadows blue so that it still maintains some of the kind of like red, primary colored kind of vibe. Um, 17,000 years to export. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need this one. Oh. Thank you. I'm glad. I don't usually do line art stuff, and my god, doing a fuck ton of line art flowers is way the hell outside my comfort zone, but this is the kind of shit that I wanted to do in practice, so I'm glad I got to. And I'm glad I got to do it for, like, a nice, a nice, like, meaningful thing. It's good stuff. Yeah, time lapses are my fucking favorite thing. Like, I, I have trouble watching people stream art because I want to see the end. I want to see where it goes. Like, if I'm watching for a specific technique or somebody's specific style, then I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. But, like, I could not watch my own art time lapses. It's god awful. I would rather die. Or I can watch my own time lapses, but I would not want to watch my own art streams because like I know my process. I know how it works. I want to see what the end looks like and like I want to see how it gets there but not have to wait 7,000 years. I want to see the process but I can't. I don't know. My brain just sucks at being at being patient. I don't know. Ah, <sighs> okay. That's why I wanted to add, I, I like that this time I've been streaming, I've been having interesting talks with people. Um, and like, finding interesting subjects to talk about. Just subjects to talk about, I feel like. Because if it's just art, I don't know. I just, I want it to be more. I want it to be something that I would also enjoy watching. What? Why do I hate you? What are you talking about? Why? Bullshit. That's some nonsense. Sorry if you guys hate cracking knuckles. I like cracking knuckles. 
Right. So it's 9.30. Possibly, yeah. It could be. That makes sense. Um, Because he's raided me, I think, once or twice. And I think I've raided him a couple times when he's been on. He's a good dude. I like his stream. The The last one I caught was when he was talking about the... um. Boom, boom conversations, and I thought that was that was an interesting concept. I like that one a lot. But I've been good. Okay, I'm glad. <laughs> All right, guys. I think that this one is. Uh... I think this is complete. Good shit. Maybe I will. I do feel like maybe a little bit. Uh, let me look at what I have to do on the on the last the study one. Do I even have that here? Study two? Oh no, I haven't okay, so I guess I haven't put the updated art back into study two because I was working on that in Photoshop. Oh neat, it opens the references. So it's still the crappy version. Ooh, okay. Um where is it? Is it in the art folder? It is in the art folder. Okay. Oh yeah, I briefly, I think I briefly talked about this last week. At the very start of the stream last week before I, or not last week, Monday? Before I started working on the, the drawing. So, so this is how it looks. And that's, the first frame is what I ended with. You call it a cover. Brain just doesn't work. But um yeah, I ended with the first frame on the actual painting, uh last time I worked on it. And then I took it into Photoshop to try and fix it because it was not right at all. That it, it wasn't looking like the reference and it wasn't looking like how I wanted the hair to look. And so then I worked on it a whole bunch, da da da, -da and fussed with it a ton. And then it ended up in this last frame. And I really, I like this last frame. I think she's very pretty. I think the hair it looks exactly how I want it to look. Like very kind of fluffy, but it's still that pink shade that's part of the, the color scheme that I was using for this series. Um, and it, it looks light, like the way I want it to. But then I showed it to my fucking art friend and he was like, but this first painting is so much better than the last painting. Like, who is she? She has a story. Like, her, the shading on her face makes it look like she's being painted back further on the horizon, but the shading on her hair looks like shes it's in the foreground. And I was like, that wasn't intentional. That was a mistake. That was a fuck up. And he was like, but it, you still did it artistically and it still creates an interesting painting. And I think you should keep it that way. And I was like, oh my God. I spent like four hours making it not like that. Not four hours. I spent like a good two hours making it not look like that. And now my art friend is telling me like, it's better if I let it look like that. And I'm just like, <sighs> so I'm in like a crisis. I feel like, I feel like the updated version that I finished suits the triptych better. Trip triptych? Trip triptych better? Um, so I think I am going to use that for the triptych. I think I have to. I feel like I would be annoyed if I didn't. So, so I think I'm going to. But that means I have to, I have to open it in Photoshop. Um, and then paste it over. Maybe that's what I'll do. Aren't exactly what you want it to be. Yeah, but also I, um... I realize that sometimes I am not, I don't have a an objective eye when it comes to my art and I could benefit from, from outside feed, feedback. Like I can't see the forest for the trees sometimes. So sometimes it's really good to, to get an outside um, view. Oh yeah. And so th then the other thing is like, does she look better with when it is that horizon colored fading or should I leave it that pink color? I 
don't know what I should do. You don't think artists can either? That's fair. I think that... You know what I'm gonna do, actually? Hang on. I know what else this needs to have happen. The... Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. I've said that like four times, but I do know, I think, what I'm going to do to fix something else that bothers me about this. Um, will that help me? Um, oh, Jesus, okay. Actually, I need to take this over to the other file and go. It's so funny that um, Rebel just has a command that you can do to do this to make all the white alpha, but like appropriately, because Photoshop does not have a good. Well, at least that I know. Maybe I've been doing this for like, doing it this way for like, God, like 10 years now, probably. Um, so maybe they do have a function that does that now, and I just don't know about it. Um, but as far as I know, Photoshop doesn't have a, uh, a good way of taking a, a black and white thing and... making it, removing the white and turning the white alpha. Okay. So there's this. And I think that that will make it. That's better. For some reason I hate using any of the techniques to get dimensions of faces correct and try to do it by eye. Luckily with tablet. That's the problem that I use too. That, that's the problem that I have also. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's suboptimal, but you know, sometimes it feels better to just render things that way and it, and it works out nice. And then sometimes it doesn't work out nice. And then there's always the liquify tool. This color. Okay, I think that this is. I think this works. Cause that's too, yep, I have hiccups. This is too green. I think, let me adjust it and make it a little bit more. No, more blue. I want it to be more blue. A touch more of that like cyan blue. I feel like preserved luminosity sometimes fucks things up worse. That's not good. No, that's bad. I don't want that at all. I don't want that. Much of that works. Yeah, okay, there's that. And shadows. Oh, that was too blue. Oh my god. Okay. That does match the colors more. How much? I'll make it. Okay, yes. I am okay with this now. Um. And oops, oops, oops. 
And then copy this, save it. Come on, you can save faster than that. Okay. Making snarfling noises. She's making little snarfling noises. But at least she stopped screaming. That's been nice. Okay. Now it's saved and I can close. It's the right size. Beautiful. Fuck it up. Hold oh, no. on. It's like an official part of this painting. And then the third reference is this one. 945, I have 15 minutes. I think I can do, I can block in some colors on this. I'll feel good about that. I will block in some colors. Oh, I forgot to post the picture of butter in the Discord. I'll do that later. I think it'll be fine to do that later. Because then I'll be able to make a pet photos channel. That's what I'll do. Then it'll be adorable and cute. What I want to do is Now there's like an actual proper gradient of that teal color in here. In now. I guess there's like some soft green browns in the top layer, and I do have some soft green browns in this. So maybe I'll use some soft green browns in this one as well, for the shadows maybe? No. Well, we'll see. And then, once I do this, it'll be... Could be. Um, super easy to finish it on Monday. That's the plan. I love- it's gonna be so fun to render these shadows the shadows from the fingers on the uh, other side of the palm. I'm just blocking them in in a really boring color right now, but I feel like that's going to be... I feel like that's going to be the most fun part um, to render, I feel like. The way it... even in this, oh my god, it, the way it goes from like a burgundy to like a gray teal in it is really... it's a good vibe. I think that'll be interesting. Very, very cool and structural looking. I like structural things. But it's like also like a flat gradient too. I don't know. I just love color and light and I'm happy that this painting is going to have a good fun amount of it in it. It looks like. That'll be neat. Maybe 
I should have it be the darker red. And then that would also be closer to the um, reference image as well. Might be like that. I think it will be like that. I think that looks nice and pretty. It's pretty. Well, I like that. Nice to see that also. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but there was just an explosion outside. Uh -oh. Let's just go. There's going to be some nonsensical color choices in this one, I feel like. But... Well, I'm thinking then. Let's see how it goes. Might be a terrible idea. Okay. I'm fucking around with weird color choices. Yeah. We'll see if they end up making sense in the long run, or whether they end up looking terrible. Find out. But yeah, I'm gonna block these in for like 10 more minutes. So that um, Monday when I work on this, the colors will already be nicely blocked in, and uh, I'll just be able to paint. That is if this ends up looking right. I know this. I think this will work. It'll just look like a person that has very strangely colored hands, which I don't necessarily mind. I think that that, excuse me, I think, I think that that is fine for what I'm going for for this. I, I like, I don't think it'll necessarily detract and I think it'll match. It's just hands in a green light. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it. understand my artistic choices. My artistic genius. You get it. Because you're also an artistic genius. I can gas both of us up at the same time. Multitasking. I feel like, um... Being able to kind of criticize and critique is a good art skill. Looking at art can also be a skill. I do strongly feel that. Because otherwise, like, how do you account for um, artists who, like, get injured and can't paint anymore, but they still have a vision? 
you can understand how things work and what looks right and what doesn't. You know how they're like temporarily embarrassed millionaires? Maybe there's some temporarily embarrassed artists. Except in like a good way, not a uh, shitty way. <laughs> I just realized the connotations for that are significantly negative. Your skill is being a dumb bitch. Honestly, excellent skill will be perfect for when we go see the Barbie movie. And hey, if you do get into sex work, um, bimbos are, and I mean the term like, um, I don't mean it like colloquially in an insulting way. I mean it in like the category, the kind of like um, the categorization kind of way. That's a whole ass vibe and people pay money for it. So, you know, you could monetize the dumb bitch vibes. Just drink all the dumb bitch juice. It's perfect. You're going to, yeah. But temporarily embarrassed millionaires are a fallacy. Yeah, but true, yeah. Listen, my brain is tired and is not coming up with good, good analogies. It's doing its best, but its best is not very good at the moment. My brain is a struggle. It's on the struggle bus. That's what's happening. The very struggle bus brain. Well, sex work is more of, well, if I can't get a job and fear homelessness, might as well start an OnlyFans. Well. Uh, Bimbofication, very huge on OnlyFans. I hear so. And also on TikTok, I feel like I've seen a lot of, um, I feel like I've seen a lot of kind of bimbo sex work advice on TikTok and people misunderstanding a lot of it and being like, they just want women to be dumb. They just want women to be fucking dumb. They're just trying to make all women dumb and stupid. And it's like, you're misunderstanding like whole point of it kind of thing. Chasers might as well pay me if they're going to be creepy. Yup. Honestly, like that's like such a vibe sex work wise. Like if you're already going to be sexualized and commodified, like at least be the one profiting from it. That's how I, I mean, that's genuinely how I feel about it. Been commodified my whole dang life. I know, Nusha, right? Sex work is work. Thank you, Nusha. Nusha is an ally. He gets it. Who is sneezing now? I see you. You're allowed to sneeze, little one. You got weird fucked up lungs, so. Yeah, you. You weird little fucked up lung baby. Oh well, yeah, I'm sad Victor didn't end up um, elucidating on whether he'd uh, thought more about sex work. I am curious to see what conclusions he came to. A lot of the dolls I follow that do sex work have super cute rooms to take pictures in. Yeah. Oh, little baby is gonna start yelling again. You don't have a cute ass room? Well, that sounds like motivation to make your room cute as fuck. This sounds like the opposite of a problem. This sounds to me like now you have a good excuse to buy cute things for your room. As if there needed to be an excuse. There was something, um, there was a commercial last night that was like, a room, your house is just like a friend you buy gifts for. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay. Yeah. All right. I can vibe with that. It was very funny. I was like, that's some consumerist shit, but also, sure. Sure, I can vibe with that. Oh, you share a room. Oh, bummer. Okay. Well, can you make your area of the room cute as fuck? Well, 
little screaming baby. Maybe, yeah. Your area is your desk? Yeah, absolutely beautify a desk. I, um, my desk was getting really, really cluttered and I had just like set it up for streaming but had only focused kind of on the utility aspect of things. And then there was just a lot of stuff that I thought I might need and then I like kept on my desk. And the other day when I was, I was tidying up up here, I got rid of a bunch of the stuff that I don't really need to have out all the time that I thought I might need but I don't often actually need. And then put a few cute things that like I don't actually need, but like I have this little, this area that has, um, I should take a picture of it, but like I have these cool rocks. And so I put this and this, and then I put my headphones right there. So now it's like a beautiful little spot for my headphones. It's unnecessary to have the other rocks, but it makes me happy and it's like nice and aesthetic to have them there. There isn't enough pink on your desk? That sounds like a fixable problem. Very, very fixable. For sure. Is there a Daiso nearby you? Because that would be a very quick fix. I don't need Daiso. Oh, that's actually a shadow. Yeah. Are there Daisos in Southern California? The first time I ever saw a Daiso. Ah, oh, bummer. Okay. Yeah, the first time I ever went to, like, learn what a Daiso was, was in San Francisco. Um, and then I found out that there's, like, one in New York, too. But that made it so my brain was like, I don't know where there are Daisos and where there aren't Daisos, because there wasn't one in Santa Barbara. That's at least not when I lived there. Maybe there's one now. That would be kind of tight if there was one there now. You have many? Nice. All right. It's funny, maybe it just, like, wasn't... I, I I never ended up going to ones in LA or anything when I lived down there. Bummer. Very tragic. This person has weird fingers. I'm gonna judge them a little bit. But I'm painting enough of this that I feel like next week when I get on I'll just end up drawing the flower part of it and then I'll be, be all set. You don't live in LA, just the county. Got it. Yeah, I mean in LA is huge anyways, so. That can mean anything. Which is like kind of cool in some ways, but also um, that it's such like a unique sprawling place, but also in some ways it's very annoying. You, what you making weird noises at me about? All these cats are making weird noises this evening. Not you, Thumbs. I wasn't even talking about you that time. I don't know if you can hear her little... She's just constantly making little... <laughs> noises, like a little bird. She's a bird now. Thumbs has... Change from cat to bird. Very cute bird, though, at least. Thanks for her. Oh, fuck that up. That's way too late. Oh, God. Yes, you could hear your thumbs the bird or a cute room would be a huge motivation for only fans yeah 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 honestly no cute room should be just a huge motivation for life you deserve to have a cute room at the very least a cute desk cute desks are like i feel like they're good for mental health thumbs concurs 
She just agreed. Oh, you you need if you had a cute room, you'd feel more inclined. Yeah. I think you should just have a cute room in general. Oh, why are you clawing my butt? Did you want to come sit up here? Baby. She just like reached up and clawed the side of me. Why? I want hair removal too. I want to get everything but my like skull lasered. Yeah, what do you think? Are you gonna get laser hair removal pumps? What do you think? No. Tom says I'm gonna get laser hair removal. Easy. I don't like my lip gloss. I need that. That was sweet. Okay, sweet baby. This is like the most she's like tolerated letting me hold her. Oh my goodness. What's that place? Who knew here? What's your sister? It's not anywhere near close to dinner time. I kind of picked her up and held her like this, thinking she would immediately get tired of it. But she's like just chilling here, so I guess I'll try and draw with her like this. Okay, now you ready to go? Okay, thank you. That actually helped me because I wasn't sure how I was going to accomplish that. Oh, it's after 10 anyways. Okay, I'll wrap this up. I'm gonna call it a night. I'm just gonna do- Ah! She fell and dragged her claw into my leg. That hurt, ma'am. Why are you like this? You don't know either? Okay, well... I'm trying to figure it out, ma'am. I don't even understand what's happening with the fingers in the background there, so I'm just gonna... for now, I guess. Uh -huh. Well, this drawing is halfway done for Monday. Cool stuff. All right. And on that note, I think I'm going to... Um... Call it a night and eat some food and then get some fucking sleep. I hope if thumbs will do me the favor of not screaming for the entire night. What is TYWA? I know, thank you, W, but I don't know what the WA means. I'm dumb and don't know all the words. Ah, okay. Well, thank you for hanging out and keeping me company while I streamed. That's good stuff. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Yo, stop fighting. Noosh and Delilah. Noosh and Delilah do like a weird yin yang of death. Hey, ma'ams. Okay, I'm gonna go right out to another stream so that I can. Delilah. No. You stop it. Delilah. Why are you being shit? What is up with you? This is absolutely unnecessary. You're interrupting my like process here. My god. Okay, let me find somebody to raid to. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, Delilah, no. I had to it took like a concerted effort to help her understand that me saying her name didn't mean she was in trouble. So now I can say, I swear to God. Deep breaths. The litter box scared her. That's really funny. Who is streaming? Okay, we can raid that guy again. All right, guys. Thanks again for hanging out, and I'll see you guys Monday. Bye. And I'll make an ending screen by next week. I hope. It work? <laughs>